just a moment ago. The Charlotte 49ers running out to what promises to be another party-like atmosphere at Jerry Richardson Stadium. College football on CBS Sports Network, presented by GEICO. A Conference USA East showdown, the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders and the Charlotte 49ers. With former Vanderbilt standout, Corey Chavis, Chris Lewis here with you. And it's hard enough to prepare for a game on a short week. It's even harder when your starting quarterback walks into the office on Sunday and leaves the team. That's Bailey Hockman for Middle Tennessee. The NC State transfer who started the first three games of this year is out. And Chase Cunningham moves into the starting lineup. Yeah, the Hawkman got benched a, a week ago, and, and Cunningham came in and kind of gave him a spark. Threw two touchdown passes in the second half. They're looking for more of that energy tonight, Chris. Indeed, and Charlotte, it's fun to be here with Will Healy, energetic head coach of Charlotte. And for him, it's all about getting above the 500 mark, wants another winning season, but to win this game, It'll have to be on the shoulders of their quarterback, fourth-year starter, Chris Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds is a player that they kind of ride in this program. He's come up in big spots. Tonight, they're looking for him to get back to that week one form. Indeed, in the sixth all-time meeting between these two teams. Charlotte won the most recent meeting, but Middle Tennessee won the first four. Again, these squads now in the same division of Conference USA. And what a gorgeous day. Temperatures in the mid-70s, sunny skies. It's been that way, of course, since we've arrived here in the Queen City. So it's fall, first game of the fall season. Couldn't feel any better to get this game underway. Club Lit is here and ready to go. They're back. <laughs> We're back and they're back. <laughs> They had a lot of fun when they had their first Power 5 win in program history three weeks ago when they knocked off Duke. You saw a lot of that. Will we <laughs> see any more of that as the game moves on? Jonathan Cruz, the kicker for Charlotte. Middle Tennessee with Jalen Lane back to return. Underway from Jerry Richardson Stadium. A fair catch sends it to the 25. So with Bailey Hockman out, Chase Cunningham is the quarterback for Middle Tennessee. It's his fifth year in the program. Career high numbers so far with three touchdowns and no picks. Kind of his moment that he's been waiting on, right? And going to see an aggressive Charlotte defense according to their coaches. The redshirt junior from Knoxville, Tennessee to lead Middle Tennessee. Team that scored just as many points as they've allowed so far this season, coming in at one and two. Cunningham on first down. First to the slot. Jimmy Marshall, a 6'5 senior, a big slot receiver, as Trey Creamer brings him down. Being up close to eight on first down and taking a look at the contributors for Middle Tennessee, back scan receivers. Chin as Cunningham keeps it and gets outside the numbers, gets the first down. Wisson Hunt gets the tackle for Charlotte. When we talked to Coach about Chase Cunningham and his mobility. You know, one of the things he talked about was that he's not quite the runner that Asher O'Hara was, but I saw enough mobility to know that they can run the zone read they just ran. Now, and here's Rasul on the give, tries to stretch it to the outside, runs into a wall for Charlotte. So the 49ers coming in at 2-1, and one, defensive line led by Marquise Watts. He's second on the all-time sacks list for the 49ers. Tyler Murray, the returning leading tackler for Charlotte. Javante Howard in the secondary, a Purdue transfer that the coaches are high on, looking to get going here in 2021. Second down and eight. off to Rasul and he is gobbled up right at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Murray, we mentioned him, the leading returning tackler and coming in with 23 of them so far on the year. And that is Rick Stockstill, one of the events. 16 years leading the way, the fifth longest tenured coach in the nation. 
It's a down that MTSU has struggled on mightily so far this year. And Charlotte's out to continue that streak. Only 30% so far on third downs. Cunningham in the pocket, is wrapped up and thrown down. The seventh sack of the season for Charlotte, already more than they had all of last season. Jalar Holly on the sack. Holly's a guy that they've been kind of waiting on to come back. You see down the field, Murray, he locks up Ali, and that was a pretty good job by him. Really nowhere to go for Cunningham on the play, uh, but Holly's a player that they've been waiting on to get something from, and he's come back in the lineup, and he's done pretty well early in his action. Kyle Ubrick ready to punt. Geo Howard, the returner. Charlotte calls fair catch. And 49er football at the 14. Chris Reynolds, fourth year starter for Charlotte, two time All Conference USA honorable mention. And Corey's looking to find that form he had in game one against Duke. Well, you know, when you talk to the, the coaches a, a little bit this week, uh, one of the things they talked about was that maybe we asked about the game last week in the rain. You know, it was interesting, and he talked about the rain because when you go back a year prior, he struggled a little bit in the rain against Appalachian State. Well, as you mentioned earlier, there's no rain here tonight. And the last time we saw him in these types of conditions, uh, he threw the ball pretty well. Against Duke, Mountain, or the uh, Conference USA Player of the Week, 324 passing yards. From the 14, Reynolds, first throw of the game in the slot. The running back, Shadrick Bird, to the 36. He's chopped down by Gregory Great, but a first play for Charlotte is a big game. Yeah, they're walking him up the scene, and they take Thompson to clear out the linebackers, and that allows him to really kind of run a follow route. And it's an excellent read by Reynolds. Pretty good job in terms of the behind that time by offensive coordinator Mark Carney. Thirty six Reynolds only 5'11 hit as he throws has a receiver open past the defense Eliza Spencer but ball couldn't get there Cody Smith was providing pressure and That's one thing that you know about defensive coordinator Scott Schaefer he's gonna bring some heat and that's number 42 Cody Smith a longer defender at about six foot three he actually times his pressures pretty well. Did that a, Q, a QB hit two weeks ago against Virginia Tech in the second quarter. So Smith, the longer defender they like to bring with pressure. Now, now. Tight end, Taylor Thompson, the receiving tight end in the formation. Quick trigger right at the 40. Slipping through one. That is Eliza Spencer, the freshman, Reed Blankenship, who's chasing his way atop the tackle list, makes a stop for Middle Tennessee. Well, that's a pretty good route, but uh, the, the run after the catch, the ability to be able to get through the tackle. We talked about Smith. He broke his tackle on that play. Short Shadrick Bird picks up the first down, bouncing off a couple of defenders and getting to midfield. Teldrick Ross to stop after a six-yard pickup. Offense for Charlotte. Offensive line. Kelly and Gist will shift back and forth. Prior games, they've done that between center and right guard. And Victor Tucker, the leading playmaker, coming in with 2,200 yards in his Charlotte career. Couple of first downs already on this drive. Reynolds, who struggled last week to get back to his week one form. Juke at the 50 and brought down by Gregory Great. Wasn't fooled as Middle Tennessee's defense gets a stop right at the line of scrimmage. And they moving some guys around because uh, they're, they're going to probably have Jordan Ferguson, number 91, playing a little bit inside a defensive tackle. Uh, and really, he's a player that uh, has been excellent on the edges for him. He already has five tackles for losses uh, this year. Keep an eye on Reed Blankenship. Coming in, 10 tackles shy of vaulting to the top of the all-time tackle list for Middle Tennessee. Second down and 10 for Charlotte. First drive of the game. Extended handoff. Shadrick Byrne bounces off a few past the 40 to the 38. 
McKinley and Blankenship combine on the stop. Game of 12. Number 70, Demetri Emanuel over here on this left side. Look at the double team. And he does a good job of cutting off of that along with a pretty good block that time by Ashton Guest, number 57. And then watch him finish the run. He made a move on Great, and Great was left <laughs> in the middle of the field with nothing but air. Bird, first couple of years at Iowa, his first year with Charlotte, had the game winning touchdown against Duke on a swing pass. On a first and ten, Calvin Camp in, and he is gobbled up immediately. Devin Curtis leading the way at linebacker for the Blue Raiders. And that is Will Healy looking to continue the success at home and, and also the post game locker room celebration known as Club Lit has gone viral and celebrates success. The theme and to have success, Chris Reynolds and Calvin Kemp will be a big part of it. Kemp, the home run hitter in the backfield. On a second and 12 from the 40. That's the Bose in motion. Reynolds has time on the out pattern. That is Victor Tucker, the leading receiver for Charlotte, pushed out of bounds at the 20 by Reed Blankenship. That's a pickup of 20 on second down. You got a little bit of flag, too, so you might get a little bit of a late hit here. Or maybe something else. Definitely a post snap penalty. Flag by the sidelines, our first time meeting. Toby Johnson. Sideline warning, Charlotte. There's no yard experience associated with this foul. Result of the play is the first down. So a warning <laughs> against kind of Charlotte. Wait, you wait, you waste, you, you wait, you, you, you kind of waste the flag right there, but they're just kind of trying to stop the play uh, with, with, by throwing the flag to explain really there's too much going on on the sidelines. Trying to get the sidelines under control of the coaches. It could be. Uh, really out of their territory that they're aligned to, supposed to be in. That's a hard sideline to control. <laughs> they're yeah. always jumping up and down. On a swing, that's J. Iris Mack. One of the receivers for Charlotte pushes up to the 15 yard line for a pickup of five. You can see Healy right here. You know. Coming down and look, ooh, he's got a pretty good vertical, doesn't he? <laughs> Man, it, <laughs> and that's may have been what they were trying to get under control a little bit earlier. But here we go, second down and seven. And, and right now, Reynolds has been in a pretty good rhythm early on in this game. He's had time on this drive. On second down, Reynolds, quick slant pattern. That's Grant DeBose. Grant DeBose for Charlotte. Breaks the seal. Charlotte. Up six zip. Well, this is the same play that we saw in week one against Duke. It's basically uh, they're faking the inside zone, and then he does the play action fake, and they, they get the one on one matchup against Teldrick Ross. And DuBose, as we've seen earlier in this season, and even last week, that's a popular play for them. He scores again. 17-yard touchdown for Reynolds. That ties the school record for passing touchdowns at 42. Extra point up and through. Charlotte strikes first at home. Well, you want to get a score? Go to DuBose because he can make it happen and has so far this season. Plenty of Tennessee roots for the 36-year-old Will Healy, the energetic leader of the Charlotte 49ers. That 2019 year, they won their final five games of the regular season to make that bowl game. But on the most recent drive, it was Chris Reynolds finding an early rhythm. His 42nd career touchdown pass, which ties the school record. Middle Tennessee to get the ball at the 25, but it was Grant DeBose getting Charlotte scoring started. Yeah, and these two guys right here, I want you to take a look at Reed Blankenship and Gregory Great. You want both of these guys to come up when you run the run action fake. And that's going to lead to this wide open post for DeBose. And, and there it goes. You see the run, the safeties, they come up, and that's really what that play design is for. You want to get those safeties nosy, and that opens up a clearance behind them. Reynolds finds it, and an excellent catch by DeBose. 
That's been a staple so far of Charlotte's yeah. offense this year. We're watching film. It, and a lot of it is because of the line action, the offensive line's action. That's the reason why those safeties are drawn forward. Second drive for Middle Tennessee. Chase Cunningham showing off the mobility, keeping it on the option, and scampering for seven yards. And I really believe his legs can be a factor. Don't forget, this is a team that has just not run the ball well. They've got to manufacture some type of running game, and getting seven yards on first down puts them in a favorable second or third down situation. A good, good play design so far for Middle Tennessee. First start of the season with Bailey Hockman leaving the team earlier this week. Again, an option keeper. He steps in front of the first down sticks, has a fresh set of downs. Yeah, you, you talked to Coach Stock still. He, he didn't want to give this away, right? I asked him about, <laughs> hey, get, is he going to run the football? And he's like, I don't think he's as good as Astro Harrow. And uh, the former quarterback who ran for over 1,000 yards for, this, for him, but he's running it so far. Cunningham, Rick to Pierce. Jaron Pierce at 5'11", a redshirt senior from Los Angeles, finds Solomon Rogers, but it's a gain of about six on first down. Again, positive plays for Middle Tennessee. Yeah. Cunningham, who was going to be the starter this week anyway, as a flag is down before the play, perhaps early movement on the Blue Raiders. Mm -hmm. Fall start. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot remains second down. As Rick Stock still has a brief conversation, but Chase Cunningham, it's been a successful season in limited time so far. He's led five touchdowns and now 13 drives so far this year. That's a really good ratio. We're on the second down. Medium distance, keeps it again. His feet quick and has an open area to the 35 before finally sliding down. That is three straight runs for Chase Cunningham. Mobility is here. Well, you, you look at number 62, Jordan Palmer. He does a good job of clearing it out, and that opens it up. And this is smart. Get down. Uh, we don't have anybody else, really, but you. And, and so you've got to make sure you protect yourself. That's one job by Cunningham. 27 yards on the ground. Quick swing pass. Again, it's Pierce. Stiff farm keeps him bounds all the way inside the red zone to the 15 before falling forward. Geo Howard on the stop. And they've got him off balance. Now, Pierce is a guy who really came on a year ago. Look at the block outside by number seven, DJ England Chisholm. And then that, that really is what enables him to get to the edge. He's a big time receiver for this team, scored last week. Tonight's red zone brought to you by Verizon. First play in the red zone for Middle Tennessee, or for Middle Tennessee. It is Chase Cunningham slithering his way past the 10, near the 5. And right now, Charlotte, I think, is just off balance, Chris. I don't think they really have any rhythm. They're rotating a lot of players on and off the field, as you can see at times. Uh, them do, uh, we've seen up here so far. And of seven, second and three. Brad Anderson checks in at running back, the number two back in this game. Cunningham has been the runner for the Blue Raiders. Quick delivery near side. Jaron Pierce makes the snag right by the goal line. He is blasted, does not get in. John Alexander prevented the touchdown. This is a good effort by Alexander. It's not an easy tap. We almost forced a fumble here. That's the wrap by Alexander, and he goes a little bit. It was enough for the first down. So three new plays for Middle Tennessee. Rasul, the running back. Some late substitutions yeah, going yeah. each way. Well, well you've got to allow the defense. Some play. The defense does not have an opportunity to match up. First down. That was an excellent explanation. That's one of the things that we were kind of talking about is that you got to allow the defense to make the substitutions once you do. And if you don't, then there'll be a stoppage of play to allow the defense to make their substitutions. And right now, they're a little bit confused. Yeah. And, and you see, you see, look at this. Number 96 coming off the field, Isaac Hampton. So they were trying to get him out. And they're bringing in some of the freshmen they talked about playing. Isaiah Potts, number 55, along with number 60, Brian Wallace. 
And getting all these substitution in, proving to be a challenge. Especially when you try to go fast. And so many. Timeout. Middle Tennessee, the first of the half. So Middle Tennessee uses the timeout, looking to even this game up right on the doors. And first start of the season for Middle Tennessee. <laughs> Not bad. Perfect for a four. Carrying it well on the ground. Right now on the doorstep. Charlotte, though, a strong red zone defense. Strength on strength. Yeah, exactly. They have six trips and they're only two touchdowns. So if they score this on the, I guess, seventh trip, you're talking about really just the third touchdown against this defense in this area of the field all year. They've gone 73 of the 75 yards. And they get the last two on first down. It's been a lot of Cunningham on the ground. Flag down before the play. Me some in the false start, I think. False start, offense number 78. Five yard penalty remains first down. That's Dorian Hinton, who made the Conference USA freshman team last year. Hanton, who's a pretty good football player, really been impressed with his ability to do exactly what he was attempting to do on that play, which is pull. And now they come out in a little bit of a bunch formation, which if you get these types of formations, the quick game is in order. Eighth play of the drive. Cunningham unleashes out of bounds. Jalen Lane in the area. Also C.J. Windham. Brings up second down. Again, Charlotte, you mentioned their red zone defense. What makes a team successful defending with the back up against the wall? Well, I think when you talk to their coaches, they say it's about, they don't even, even talk about the red zone. They just say, if you give us some grass, we'll go out and play. And so if you put the football down, let's play. And that's a, a, certainly in, in a very courageous mentality to have. On second and goal, Cunningham the rollout. Delivers right at the goal line. Jimmy Marshall, the catch, steps into the end zone. It's a touchdown with a flag down. And Charlotte seems to think it's against Middle Tennessee. I think that's against Charlotte with a hold in the back of the end zone. Or maybe against their new safety, Solomon Rogers. Would be a seven-yard touchdown if it stands for Middle Tennessee. Oh, so the offense is off the field, so they think it will. Completely left Marshall uncovered. This is this is a long conversation. Yeah. We could probably get another is meal it, in. At this point, <laughs> you, you might be thinking multiple penalties. <laughs> Pass interference, defense number three. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. That's so, Trey Kramer. Yeah, Trey Kramer on the penalty. So it makes you think, what was the conversation about? Because it was a touchdown on the play anyway. Yeah, and then maybe it's something that you made more than one guy <laughs> had a penalty. They tried to decide on who they would call it on. I mean, the only way you would discuss that, it was a dissertation. <laughs> Nine plays, 75 yards. Middle Tennessee with Zeke Rankin on the extra point. Holders the punter, Kyle Ulbrich. It's through, we're tied, seven all. Jerry Richardson Stadium always has a great atmosphere. It's the road team, Middle Tennessee, on the touchdown drive. Take a look at his last touchdown, and what you're gonna see is they're gonna bring their receiver in motion, and then all of a sudden, if we pause it right here, now you have the penalty and then you have Jimmy Marshall. Nobody covers him in the flats. He's wide open. So the men, basically, they're trying to give a run fake. They take the run bait, and they leave Marshall wide open. Bit on the cheese. You can see six, number six on that play, Solomon Rogers. And nine play, 75-yard drive. Three minutes and 58 seconds to go. Three I'm trying to have four, drive. Drive to have four runs, five passes, balance. For Middle Tennessee. Charlotte to get the football back with Shadrick Bird on the return. Who's the starting running back? Shimmies at the 30. Dives ahead to the 35. 
decent field position for Charlotte to begin their next drive. Nothing says football Sunday like tops. Our crew gets you ready for all the NFL Week 3 action on that other pregame show. Sunday morning at 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. A couple of Conference USA East teams squaring off. Chris Reynolds, fourth-year quarterback for Charlotte. Looks sharp early. In fact, both quarterbacks looking pretty good early on. And yeah, shaping up to be quite the scoring onslaught with the way both have played in the first quarter. Charlotte's been a good rushing team as well this year. And on first down, they go to the ground, and Calvin Camp powers his way through a couple of tackles and gets three yards. Zalen Wood credit with the stop. Charlotte preseason number four in Conference USA East. And Middle Tennessee preseason five. Those are the strong rushing numbers. Calvin Camp, Shadrick Bird, Shavon McEacher. The three main backs. And this is McEacher in the backfield here on a second and seven. With a lot of communication. Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator for Middle Tennessee, loves to blitz. Comes with some here. On his second and seven, jumping a toss. Taylor Thompson dives in. Makes the grab right at midfield. The flag is down by the quarterback. Be a gain of 12. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 42, 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. That's Cody Smith with the roughing the passer. That was clearly after he throwing the football. Uh, it's kind of unnecessary. Uh, that, that, it wasn't a, a wallop, but he kind of smacked him just a bit. I say, every hit looks a little <laughs> bit harder when the target's only 5'11 at best. <laughs> And that's Cody Smith who had the penalty. So inside the 35 on a first and 10. Javon McEachern has a crease. Stutter step at the 20. Dives ahead and has the first down before Quincy Riley makes the tackle to gain a 15 for the third back for the 49ers. It's a work off that left side. And you're running behind a, a, a pretty good just basically block up top by number one Victor Tucker uh, blocking downfield if you re receivers block downfield you can have explosive runs and Tucker on that last play did a good job of blocking downfield Corey you were talking about Charlotte's offensive line you had your eye on Hunter Kelly coming into this game yeah I did and but you know what's interesting to me what I've seen earlier is number 79 to Boise Nawana their left tackle on that left side we just referred to he's actually playing and that's a guy that we haven't seen a lot from, so they made some changes there as well. First down, Victor Tucker slithers near the 10, runs into the referee in the middle of the field, stays on his feet, and finally, Fuellen brings him down right near the first down sticks. That's got to be disappointing because the umpire here is Joe Nannis. You're going to see Nannis come in here and he's gonna be, he's like, let me, let me tackle. <laughs> Second down and one, fade pattern, left side, Grant DeVos goes up top and brings it in again. Second touchdown of the first quarter. Charlotte, 13 to seven. Grant DeBose, a 12-yard fade route. Well, this is good touch for Reynolds. You can give him a chance in one-on-one -on -one situations against DeCorey and Patterson. And just stronger. I think Patterson's a pretty strong corner, but DeBose had over 200 pounds. <laughs> He's gotten off to quite the start. He says this is his house. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jerry Richardson Stadium. Cruz, the extra point. It's through. And for Chris Reynolds. He's atop the record list for passing touchdowns for Charlotte. Career touchdown number 43. It's a fade pattern to Grant DeBose, who's making a home here in Charlotte. Will Healy loves it. His great battle of the backs in that A&M Arkansas game. Yeah, Isaiah Spiller didn't really get going too much against Colorado, but since then, 
he's been <laughs> pretty good. And Chris Reynolds, he's been pretty good tonight. Both quarterbacks sharp early on. Reynolds, his 43rd career touchdown pass. New school record. Kicking off Middle Tennessee to have the football coming up next. And with Corey Chavis, Chris Lewis here. And both quarterbacks have looked really good so far. Chris Reynolds, perhaps expected, but Chase Cunningham, it's his first start of the year for Middle Tennessee. I think they've calmed him down with him running the football. You incorporate the zone read. That sets up some of the quick passing game. And all of a sudden, your, your quarterback is in a comfort zone. Uh, smart coaching, I think, by Rick Stockstill and that staff. Doing the things that your quarterback feels comfortable with. Should mention with Bailey Hockman, who was the starting QB the first three games for Middle Tennessee. He left the team, citing family reasons as the way reason he's stepping away. But Chase Cunningham was Alpha going to be the starting quarterback anyway this week. Charlotte, number two, Middle Tennessee. Those penalties canceled. First down, Middle Tennessee. So some extra curricular, both sides. So no penalty yardage assessed on them as both offset. So Middle Tennessee scored on their most recent drive. Cunningham, the junior from Knoxville, Tennessee. Last week had two touchdowns in the second half, replacing Hockey, and has kept that strong form as he's under center on this first and ten. On the sweep, DJ England Chisholm, who is a speedster. Scampers to near the 30, picks up four and a half. Geo Howard, a tackle for Charlotte. England Chisholm, a track star out of South Carolina, has a touchdown on the year receiving. Second down, medium distance, a bounce pass to England Chisholm. Don't want to do that. Well, that, was, that could have uh, likely have ended up being the hands of Murray for an interception. Now you're in third down. This is where you struggle. So the, the, the guy that you, you would think that they would be looking for maybe on this down is number six, Jimmy Marshall. He's not on the field. So in, in this case, you've got to get this guy involved, number nine, Jaron Pierce. He was your leading receiver a year ago. He's a third down maestro. And he's the guy you got to get involved. He already has four catches on this game for 40 yards. Third down and six. Middle of the field. Jaron Pierce, the go-to guy, right near the 35. That should be the first down as Tyler Murray, the leading tackler from a year ago, looking to do the same this year for Charlotte. That's somewhat of a rocket screen. So now you have to have Yusuf Ali get out and make a block. Number 65, Marcus Greer gets out and makes a block. The center. Uh, so when you have those rocket screens, offensive linemen have to get out and block, and receivers also have to make good space blocks. They gave him the 34, not the 35. So to end the first quarter, it'll be a fourth down upcoming for Middle Tennessee. Of the first quarter. So it's a decision time for Rick Stock still, but he'll have a little bit of time to think about it. Terry Richardson Stadium here in Charlotte. Already a lot of energy and big plays each side. Three touchdowns in a corner. Middle Tennessee has reasons to be hyped. But Charlotte has the lead. They see with the football, their own 34. It's a fourth and one. Long discussion during the quarter break as to what to do. Decision time. Corey, what would you well, do? They're backed up now. They got stopped a week ago on fourth and one against UTSA. But they feel like I'm thinking that they're bringing their running court. Well, they've got a running quarterback in in terms of Chase Cunningham. They're going to be able to make them have to think about whether or not he might keep it. And Jimmy Marshall, number six, is back in the game. Middle Tennessee this season, two for six on fourth down. This an aggressive one. Fourth and one in their own territory. Handoff to Rasul stretches the ball out, and that might have done it to move the chains. A late stretch. When you can't run the ball, you have to sometimes send a message to your football team. We're going to run it. They've already gotten the quarterback involved, and now they get a running back involved in the action as well. Bam. You can, oh man, that was a big time lick that <laughs> Chase Cunningham took on the last play. Mentioned running struggles. That is a story of the season for Middle Tennessee so far. Float pass to the near flat. That is Jimmy Marshall, a big 6 5 target. There's a flag down on the other side of the field. A lot of penalties so far in this game. <laughs> 
you hear me need me. And deep into the second quarter, we've had quite a bit of penalties. Four now on Middle Tennessee. Offside in the neutral zone at the snap. Defense number seven. Five yard penalty from the previous spot remains first down. So Corfi Wardlow, who is a defensive end, lined up too close to the line of scrimmage. He, for, he actually forced a safety a week ago against Georgia State. Uh, very good effort on the play. Um, That's the first penalty of the game for Charlotte. First and five. Brad Anderson. <laughs> Big room, big block to help him out as Anderson slides into Charlotte territory for a big game. Look at that stiff arm. Oh, but this is what this is translating speed to power. You want to come tackle me? I'm the smallest back. I might run the hardest. Number 12, Shedrick Ursary says, I don't know if I want to do that next time. Anderson. Gets the carry once more. This time snuck out closer to the line of scrimmage. And remember, they said during the week he got the Warrior of the Week for its blocking last week. I asked the coaches when we were watching the game film from a week ago against UTSA, and he was stepping up and blocking just like he ran over Ursula. Watch this. Ooh, he has no problem with contact. One of the toughest players on this team. Gotta love Anderson. Coaching staff called him a dog in a good way. <laughs> Second and long. Rifle to the sidelines. Jimmy Marshall again. So Marshall and Pierce have been the top two targets so far for Chase Cunningham. Gain of six. And that's just understanding the offense. He was under some pressure that time, and the timing allowed him to beat it. And there were some free hitters in Cunningham's face. Number fourth down. Kept this drive going in their own territory. This is a third down and three. Anderson spins right at the line of scrimmage, running hard. Up to the 27. Marquise Watts makes the tackle. Shy of the first down. Yeah, Rasul coming back in the game, number 34, Amir Rasul, who actually got the other fourth and one. And this fourth down again, they're going to give it right back to him. I'd be surprised if they were to play action pass. It might be Marshall, number six. But I expect him to run it. The Florida State transfer Rasul in the backfield. Fourth down and one. Went for it in their own territory. Got it. Now on Charlotte's side of the field. Extended handoff gets to Rasul. A big back. Listed 200 pounds. Falls forward enough for a fresh set of downs. John Alexander, Brian Wallace, the two combining for the tackle. This is the last of three straight road games for Middle Tennessee. That started with a meeting at Virginia Tech, a loss last week to UTSA, finishing up the trip against Charlotte. Jalen Lane. Has quick feet, but didn't get a chance to get rolling there. Solomon Rogers brings him down. That was an excellent sock tackle by Rogers. Much Rogers kind of flashed into the screen right here and dropped down low and wrap around the thigh boards of number 83 Lane, who's an excellent punt returner. He's already taken one to the house in that category, but Rogers is a solid open field tackle. From the 24, second and seven, setting up a screen. It's off the mark. Isaiah Gappings, the target on the screen, but Marquise Watts was closing in. Uh, watch number two on this play uh, come right up and do a really good job of defending uh, the screen. And that number two is a player, Justin Wisenhunt, who's come into the lineup and done a very good job the last couple of weeks of kind of solidifying some of their linebacking core. He's done a good job of reading and reacting, and that was a good play by Wizard Hunt that time. Haven't converted a third down yet for Middle Tennessee. A little bit more time to think about this one. Charlotte up a touchdown. Yeah, They're the ones who take the timeout. 30 seconds in land. Leading it home. Another long drive for Middle Tennessee, down a touchdown early on in the second quarter. 
Blue Raiders offense struggling to run the ball this season. Average only 54 rushing yards per game and already significantly more than that. Well, I mean, it starts with Cunningham. He's opened everything up and now you got third down and seven. And if you're looking for what you might get here, uh, let's take a look again and see where Marshall is aligned. He's over isolated away from the three receivers. That's a guy I would look at on this down. Versatile player. All alone on that far side. Third down and seven. Cunningham with time. Floats it down the middle. Bobble and a catch. Jalen Lane. Count it. Touchdown, Middle Tennessee. 24 yard strike. A bit of a bobble here. Does he corral it? I think he does. And, and I guess that all he has to do is get one elbow down and one knee. That was that was an excellent job on this kind of a double catch, but the placement in terms of ball placement by Cunningham, outstanding. Jalen Lane's second receiving touchdown of the season. Great ball by Cunningham. This to tie it up from Rankin. Indeed. Training touchdowns each way. Charlotte got a score. Middle Tennessee answers. Charlotte another. Of course, Middle Tennessee's right there. There is a flag down on the extra point. There has been quite a few penalties that we've seen so far. What a job by this Middle Tennessee offensive line tonight so far. The point at the try is good. There's no foul on the play. Media timeout. He wanted to get some air time. <laughs> <laughs> A flag down for no reason. Tied at 14. He runs a post, the back side tight end runs a, a post. And, and now you have one-on-one -on -one coverage, no safety help for the corner. And that's where the ball placement of Cunningham comes into play. If you can get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities with no safety in the middle of the field, you have to take advantage. And so far in this game, Cunningham has been on point in everything they've asked him to do. Both quarterbacks in this game are former walk-ons. And the production there so far through the first half. Pickoff by Scott Payne and Chadrick Bird to return for Charlotte from the four. Spins off the hit at the 20 and gets a couple of more yards. Uh, Chris Reynolds tonight has been pretty good, too. And this is the skinny post early to Grant DeBose. And then the touch to DeBose. He said once was good, but twice is better. <laughs> Goes back to him. And then he kind of gets the crowd into it. But you compare these two quarterbacks tonight, you mentioned it. The numbers have been outstanding. Reynolds, the efficiency is back. A couple of weeks. You combine those games, they don't even come close to matching the production from the first game. So a bit of a slump for the former baseball player, Chris Reynolds. Looking to break out of it at home. On a first down. Slant for Tucker. Hounded mm. by Quincy <laughs> Riley, who had a great game last week for Middle Tennessee. He did. His confidence has to be just skyrocketing. I mean, you, you've got two interceptions a week ago. Now you're in man to cut man to man coverage, and you say, no way. And he kind of puts his hands behind his back to say, locked up. <laughs> and that was a very good play by Riley. Another guy from South Carolina on this roster. Physical matchup, too. Tucker, a physical <laughs> receiver. Riley matching it. Bird the running back. Tucker in motion. Late snap. Mm. Once again, Toby Johnson. That's a chance to make a call. False start. Multiple players on the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains second down. Well, Chris Reynolds atop the all-time passing yardage list, now atop the all-time touchdown list at Middle Tennessee with his couple in this game. So not bad for a former walk-on who 
always finds a way to beat out his competition. Oh, he definitely struck gold. <laughs> They got the gold uniforms on. They must have known he was going to break the record tonight. As good as gold so far. But this is a second and long. Reynolds, time initially. Here's he throws, floats. DQ Thomas made the catch, but out of bounds for Middle Tennessee. Starling was right in the grill of Reynolds as he threw it. And Starling was in his grill. You had Ferguson in pursuit. These tackles are going to be challenged tonight. Now they've got a new guy in. We talked about him, Chibozzi Nawana, at the left tackle position. And that's a huge challenge when you're going up against Ferguson. Now they talked about moving Ferguson inside, but on that play, he was outside at defensive end along with the guy you mentioned, Starling. Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator for Middle Tennessee, loves versatile defensive players, not just versatile in where they can play, versatile in the sports that they can play. Third and long for Reynolds. Steps up, rifles, low. Spencer, you're the first down sticks, but it's incomplete. You got to be happy if you're Scott Schaefer. You get him in the third and long after really what was a negative couple of plays. And and now you can kind of change serve, right? You're going back and forth, and can you break serve? It basically is what this kind of comes down to at 14 all. And I believe that with Jalen Lane back here, Charlotte's punt coverage has to be sound. I think he has some really good instincts as a punt return. Charlotte last season had some issues on punt protection. New punter Bailey Rice has come in and has helped stabilize that. You know, Will Healy is really impressed with the work the Australian has done as the punter. The Middle Tennessee is known for blocking kicks. Rice gets it off without much pressure. Here's Lane, calls fair catch, back pedals to the 33. Chase Cunningham back to work, getting the start for the first time this season. The former walk on for Middle Tennessee. His son and a former quarterback, Brent Stock still. It's Brent's first year as the receivers coach and a record setting quarterback from 2013 to 2018. First down, it's a throw to the flat, a screen pattern for DJ England Chisholm, the track star out of South Carolina. Scampers for four. Not one stock still. Brent working with my receivers because he was the best quarterback arguably in the history of the school. He threw 31 touchdowns in one season. Uh, it's a, a guy you want to learn from. Second down, pump fake. Cunningham down the seam wide open. Big acceleration and finally stopped by Solomon Rogers. Big gain of 52. I mean, that was just complete busted coverage. I mean, there's nobody at all on, on number 89. Except Ali. Ali. Yeah. And, and, and I think the thing that you have, they've gone to so many formations, uh, they're kind of messing with the eyes of Charlotte's defense so far in this game. Ali, just the third catch of the year, but had a big week of practice heading in. And then a whistle before the play after the big gain of over 50 yards. And again, I got to talk about this offensive line after this call. Because this line has done. Officials timeout for equipment with the change. Can you have a big play like that? Sometimes it takes a little bit longer <laughs> to move those chains. Now, you said the weather was good. They got to work out before <laughs> the game, after the game. Really comfortable <laughs> temperatures in the mid 70s to begin. And get, get better, better running. <laughs> Hey, you're not going to get better workout weather than this seat, Lou. you got to get it in. got to check your a watch for your steps. <laughs> you got in. Cunningham for Pierce, who drops it on a parallel pass. Officials immediately rule it incomplete. That's close. No, that, that ball is parallel to the line of scrimmage. That's a live ball. Be careful with those. And that's why we, we talked to uh, some of the replay officials before the game about this same rule. We'll see if that's, yeah, that's forward. You can see him come forward, but if that's parallel and you drop it, now it's all bets are off. They can pick it up and go the other way. Another trip in the red zone for Middle Tennessee. Trying to take the lead. Ali again on a wing pattern. Stood up outside the 10 by Tyler Murray. Laying down the wood for Charlotte. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's the kind of showstopper, right, for this defense, Tyler Murray. And this is his ability. He runs through a block. That's the first thing. So I'm going to get you off of me, number 81, C.J. Wyndham. And now you can have some. And talking about Ali. And the thing about Murray that's so impressive, we talked to the coaches, he actually covers the slot. A linebacker that covers the slot. Played strong safety when he was at Troy. They've actually got two former Troy defenders starting on their defense, he along with Wittenheim. Sets up a third down, Middle Tennessee. It's gotten closer on some third downs that I set up fourth and shorts. Timeout called by Middle Tennessee. That's a big play. Timeout. Rick Stock still Tennessee. wanting to make sure he has the right play here. 30 seconds in the left. Couple of timeouts already used by Middle Tennessee mm -hmm. here in this first half. Chase Cunningham, not bad for start number one of the season. You know, it started off with just this, showing I can run too. <laughs> and then, you know, gets the quarterback draw, gets up the field. He slides here, which is smart. A very, very athletic quarterback. This on the move with Murray in his face to Marshall. They decide not to cover him. And now the post route. I can do this down the field as well. What can't I do or what haven't I done here in the first half? They got to be ex extremely pleased. It was the balance that he's shown, the leadership, and how he's gotten them in and out of plays. That's the one thing that you have to like about how efficient their offense has run so far. And the six carries for 54 yards, different dynamic to yeah. what their offense is. Yeah, Bailey Hogman was not a runner. He was a very, he's a left-handed thrower who's a timing passer the same way as he was at NC State. Uh, Cunningham gives you the timing, but he gives you an extra element because he can pull it on his own read. Third and eight out of the timeouts. Fifth year in the program, the former walk-on, Chase Cunningham. Three down set for Charlotte. Cunningham, flush left. Looking to set, finally takes off. Well short of the first down, gets to about the nine. And some of the best decisions you make are sometimes the throws you just say, you know what, I'm going to tuck it and go out of bounds. Uh, that, that is kind of... Uh, what was missing and there's nobody open uh, look at this outstanding coverage by Charlotte's defense uh, England Chisholm is trying to work for him, but they, they basically have that all covered off Creamer and some of those guys up top so good decision by Cunningham Excellent coverage by Charlotte their red zone defense continues to be sound and Coming in only three touchdowns allowed on six red zone trips first field goal attempt of the season for Zeke Rankin. That clean kick is through. Middle Tennessee came into this game one of three teams without a field goal attempt. They get a field goal here as Rankin nails his first of the year, and it's the first lead of the game for Middle Tennessee. A 65 year break from football. <laughs> a lot happened in those 65 <laughs> years. They come back with a pretty good start this season. 2021. Calvin Camp getting ready to return from Scott Payne, the kickoff specialist of the Blue Raiders. It is Camp from about the 10. Big crash mm. at the 20. So that's Zeke Rankin. First field goal attempt of his career. The freshman nailed it. 26 yarder. Middle Tennessee was just one of three teams that had not attempted a field goal this year coming in. And if you only kick field goals and you don't kick off, you better make them. <laughs> That's what everybody on the sidelines is saying. <laughs> They're happy he made it, but he doesn't even kick off. That job goes to Scott Payne. There's a lot of pressure on him when he gets on the field to make it happen. Making it happen. That's what Reynolds was doing early. He was eight for his first nine. Since then, straight incompletions. From just outside the 20. Calvin Camp chopped down at the 21, right at the line of scrimmage by Reed Blankenship. Over 300 tackles in Blankenship's career for Middle Tennessee. Well, he triggers. Uh, there, there's some misses. He has some misses in the UTSA game and also Virginia Tech. But some of the tackles he makes are some of the hardest that you'll see or you've seen over the course of four years from him in terms of the safety position in college football. Uh, a very good football player who has excellent ball skills as well. He's five tackles away from Roosevelt Coleman's school record tackles at Middle Tennessee. 
After the gain of one, second and nine. Camp once more zigzags right side has the first down pass to 30 dives ahead at the 36 Quincy Riley the corner on the stop it's a gain of 13. And they're running behind really number 85 Ryan Carrier their tight end he's probably their best blocking tight end he gets on the edge and he seals the edge and camp shows that burst that he has. He's got, you know, he lost that ball last week, the fumble against Georgia State, and they want to see him have better ball security uh, as a runner because he has the explosion. When you make a mistake like that in a key spot, does that kind of fire you up for the next week to want to make up for it? Yeah, I think it does, Chris, and part of it is because you want to prove that it's not who you are. Reynolds guns over the middle. Once again, Grant DeBose, who has two touchdowns in this game, had them both in the first quarter. He was defended by Teldrick Ross. Six yards on first down. DeBose turning into a big play weapon for Reynolds. Give Camp. Slides near the first down, gets to midfield. Teldrick Ross, Jalen Davis combined on the stop. That is enough to move the chains for Charlotte. Approaching Middle Tennessee field position. Yeah, Ross is a really good tackler for a corner because he's had the safety experience. And, and, and that's one of the things Scott Schaefer likes to do with his some of his safeties have played corner and some of the corners have played safety. Allows his defense to be multiple. But one of the things that I enjoy from Scott Schaefer is how he talks about getting players on the team that play a lot of different sports, mm -hmm. not just football. Yeah, the three first is what he was talking either three positions in, in high school football or three sports. He often looks for those guys when he's on the recruiting trail. And he takes that back to his days as a head coach at Syracuse. Shadrick Bird got the start at running back in this game across midfield to the 49. Pretty good job that time by Zaylin Wood working down the line of scrimmage. I've been impressed with Zaylin Wood. He's not the biggest defensive tackle, number 96, but uh, Wood is, is, I think, for the most part, played bigger than his size at times. He blocked a kick a, a week ago against UTSA just with that leverage that he plays with. They need him to play big in this game. Typical to sharp to uh, Middle Tennessee's defense. A lot of players that are close to the line of scrimmage at the time the ball is snapped. Sadrick Bird tries to muscle his way through that pile, setting up third down, medium distance. And this is kind of what you want. Third and six. And this has been a big pressure down from Middle Tennessee. They, they pressured Virginia Tech. They also brought some pressure against UTSA. You wonder with the formation variety of Charlotte and the way they move guys around in here, maybe even close down the formation, whether that takes Scott Schaefer out of the potential blitz. Reynolds has seen a lot of different looks. Fourth year starting quarterback. And a couple of big plays in a two minute drill situation in week one. A standout performance against Duke. With Camp the running back, third down. Camp gets the swing pass, needs to make somebody miss, does not, and then eventually does. Blankenship had the initial stop, was enough to slow Camp down before the rest of the defense caught up. It's fourth down. Well, he didn't bring a blitz, but he brought a pressure, a five-man pressure. That's why Reynolds had to get rid of the ball. You kind of see them converge on the ball, but you're going to see the pressure from one of the linebackers, and then Reynolds has to get rid of the ball. Watch Blankenship converge when he gets rid of it. He has to make another open field tackle. We talked about that earlier, how he is forced to make a lot of tough tackles. You mentioned Scott Schaefer, former head coach at Syracuse. One of the things that he harped on there, that picture club, have as many people in the frame of the yeah. tackle yeah. as possible. Wants to see at least five, six different players in the frame. Fair catch called by Jalen Lane inside the 10 yard line. Middle Tennessee down a touchdown earlier a score of the game's last 10 have a three-point lead and a football you can see the scores there but this possession is of importance 303 left yeah in the half yep. charlotte gets the ball to start the second half so what's the meaning of this drive the meaning of this drive and and, and, and we've talked about this is you've got two timeouts left for charlotte you got to make them use those timeouts here before the end in the half so run the football a little bit on this drive 
The first play run, and he is crushed. Tyler Murray with a hammer. The Jacksonville, Florida native, the Troy transfer. Wow. Look at this explosion on contact. Now, this is the first game where we've seen these types of hits. We saw the fourth fumble against Duke in the end zone, but these hits are sending a message. The coaches have probably talked to him and said, we need statement plays. He's giving many of those so far. Lost him a couple on first down. That clock winds. Yes. Cunningham, first start of the season. An empty backfield. Backpedals in his own end zone. Gets rid of it. Yeah, but that stops the clock. And that's exactly what they wanted. Now you're in third and 12, and you're backed up. And so you're going to put some pressure on your punter as well. What we, what you wanted to get out of this drive of your Rick Stockstill, and more importantly, Brent Deerman, their, their offensive coordinator, is that you wanted to get them to use a timeout. They've got both timeouts left and... Like you said, they get the ball first in the second half. So if you're in Middle Tennessee here, does a draw make a lot of sense to maybe get Charlotte to use the timeout? Draw or a screen. Charlotte showing blitz. Back off. There is the draw. It's Brad Anderson. Pinball to the 10. Charlotte gets the defensive stop with 2.13 left. There's that timeout. And yep. now Chris Reynolds, the ball will be in his court. Right, and you've got one timeout, and we've seen how he's performed in some of the two-minute situations in the past. Timeout. But with one timeout, a little bit different, different though. Second of the half. And, and the management, from the management half. perspective with Charlotte. These end-of-half situations like this, like how often does a game kind of come down to that? The, the end of the first half, especially because of the possession game of it, you can get a two-for-one. Well, it comes down to it a lot when you haven't scored much in the first, in the in, in the fourth quarters. Uh, that's one of the things that I think that, well, they do score a lot in the fourth quarters when they've been behind, but the first and third quarters, excuse me, when you're talking about Middle Tennessee, they've been outscored so far this year in the first and third quarters, 43 to 7. So it puts more pressure on you to make sure you win the end of the half. You just saw Will Healy. He was talking about game management perhaps being a thing that wasn't a strength for mm -hmm. himself in the last game against Georgia State. So we'll see how the end of half management goes with the punt by Ulbrich for Middle Tennessee. This is Dollar on the return for Charlotte. He's gobbled up near midfield. 2.03 left. First half winding down. Chris Reynolds, we saw him in this similar situation at the end of a game against Duke. You referenced it where he was very calm in those situations, but the one constant, he liked to look for Victor Tucker. Yeah, he did, and, and that's because that's his two-minute guy. Uh, I think in, in this case, you're going to have the boats on the field as well. And now you have to ask yourself, Scott Schaefer, what does he do? Do you end up playing more zone to keep the ball in front of you, or do you pressure and, and put your corners in one-on-one -on -one situations against those receivers you referenced? Tight end carrier in motion. Reynolds on first down handoff. Shadrick Bird crawls to midfield and then a flag. Just with his helmet off to bring you to an attention there whenever you see a flag down and a helmet off. Wait a minute, how did the helmet come off? We talked about the penalties. There have been a smorgasbord of penalties here this evening. Or a buffet. We're talking about food quite a bit. Barbecue? Barbecue? I had, I had the chicken at least. The first one foul. <laughs> Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 42. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. So that's Cody Smith. And again, with this. seven of Charlotte may remain in the game due to a number five. With this having his helmet off, you automatically look Game's there when you see the flag down, down. Mm -hmm. and that indeed was the action. Yeah, it was. And, 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 and that also, also stops the clock. Here's 42. Takes that helmet off. Trying to get off the block. Gist is a pretty tenacious blocker. And that's what you call latching on and running your feet. And he did an excellent job of that. And Smith got a little frustrated. And playing pretty well tonight. That was not a smart play. Low snap for Reynolds. In Middle Tennessee territory. Off balance throw, but a laser to Grant DeBose. 
Right near the first down sticks. That's that baseball background for Reynolds with the off balance throw. Uh, the, 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 the video shows it perfectly in terms of how he dropped that elbow down. Rose, of course, wants that ball. Quick move of the change, first and ten. This is Tucker down the near sideline. It's incomplete. Quincy Riley step for step with Charlotte's top target. And, and Riley did give up a couple of plays last week, but I think when you make plays, the, the ones you give up, your, your memory becomes shorter. And so far in this game, when he's been challenged, he's been up to the task. Minute 45 to go. Jonathan Cruz has a career long of 56, the kicker for Charlotte. And that's something you want to make sure you're aware of as Reynolds as you manage this, this situation because you can always, that's your fallback plan. Scott Schaefer's defense blitzes. Hand off to Shadrick Bird right into the middle of that blitz. That moves the clock. And it brings up third down. And, and one of the things that I like about what Charlotte is doing right now, they're going to force Middle Tennessee to make a decision. Do you want us to go ahead and let the clock continue to run? Because if we get it all the way down here to about, let's say, a mi one minute, and then we end up running this play, and we get a first down, you have no chance to get the ball back. And we get it back first in the second half. So this has been really good clock management by Mark Carney. We've done a good job of calling plays tonight. How he's mixed up running pass. And that game management, which wasn't a strength, according to Charlotte's own coaches, last week. With a minute left. Third and long. Zips it over the middle. It's lost by Elijah Spencer. Made the catch, hit the ground. It's ruled a fumble. And Zalen Wood on top of it. Wow. The Wood on the field is a catch, fumble, recovered by the defense. First down, Middle Tennessee. And look at the strip by Cody Smith, number 42. He got the penalty. He said, I'm going to make up for it. You got me for the penalty. Let me make up for it. Get you back. And he rips it out. Blankenship almost gets it. And then number 96, we talked about him a little bit earlier. Zaylen Wood running to the football. Now Middle Tennessee. One time out left. 51 seconds to go. They're back in play. And if they, they, if they can go down and score, they can make it a two-score game knowing Charlotte gets their ball back in the second half. Eighth forced turnover this year for Middle Tennessee. They forced five fumbles and recovered them all. Cunningham with a flag down, a couple of them. Hurls to the left. Accelerates, has the first down. But again, a couple of flags in the area of holding. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if this one stands <laughs> with 40 seconds left. Cunningham has been a man on the run. Holy offense number 53. Gonna last half the distance to the goal. Remains first down. Lance Robinson guilty. And number 53 right here on the right side. Lance Robinson. He got a pretty good rip move that time by number 95. The guy that they talked they was about playing Miguel Jackson. He does an up and under rip move and <laughs> Robinson says you're not getting through, but you can't <laughs> grab the way he did. Caught your team valuable yardage in a two-minute situation. And now you, you might want to think about it. they still have that timeout. Maybe go ahead and run it here if you're Middle Tennessee. At a certain point, taking the pedal off the metal. Mm -hmm. As Amir Rasul gets the give. Not much there. And let that clock wind down. Charlotte doesn't look like they're in any urgency to use that timeout here at the end of the half. You go back to that turnover. Charlotte was in field goal range, especially yeah. with their kicker. Yeah. A third down play. Spencer loses the ball. Middle Tennessee, another key force turnover. That's been one of their strengths defensively. It has been. Uh, you, you mentioned just uh, really just comes down to uh, the timeliness of some of the turnovers. They forced now five fumbles on the year. That was an excellent play by Smith thinking turnover use that fist punch the ball out from Elijah Spencer and Charlotte remains down by three at the half middle Tennessee down by seven a couple of times in this game score the half's last ten points Cunningham his first start 
Look at Sharp. Good four scores each way. Middle Tennessee with the narrow lead over Charlotte 17-14 <laughs> with Corey Chavis, Chris Lewis here with you. And I, Corey, you're a former defensive back. You must have loved when you got to face a quarterback without a lot of experience. Well, for for Middle Tennessee, with Chase Cunningham coming into this game, not much experience, but he's been excellent. Chris Reynolds, the same thing. Both quarterbacks have looked good. They really have. It, it's been really a, a tale of how quickly can we score. At least that's what it seemed to be at first. Uh, it, the, you got the skinny pose to the bows, and, and that was just a, 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 an excellent read by Reynolds. And then the legs of Cunningham, uh, they kind of shone throughout the first half. Yeah, with uh, Chris Reynolds, you're seeing a lot of the playmaking of the lock passes to guys like Grant DeBose, who's looked excellent so far. And meanwhile, Chase Cunningham, the position that he's been in, vaulted into the starting lineup after Bailey Hockman, the usual starting quarterback for the first three games for Middle Tennessee, left the team on Sunday. So a tough spot, but he's held up pretty well. Well, both 12 out of 17, both two touchdowns, no interceptions. Yeah, that's kind of talking about comparing. Well, club lit the Charlotte sideline. We're going to get fired up out of the halftime break. It is Charlotte with the football to begin the second half, and the ball rolls into the end zone. It is a touchback. Our Ryan first half stats, and that turnover was big. It was at the end of the first half. Charlotte was in a position to potentially tie it. Instead, Middle Tennessee went into the break with the lead. And if they score on that possession, this is now 21-17 in your ball starting the second half. So that turnover that you're referencing, uh, it, it kind of took the wind out of the sails a little bit. Can they get going here in the second half early? Uh, you got, let's take a look at They're making a change now. Number 77 is coming back in. Jackson Hughes at that left tackle spot, replacing number 79, Jaboise Nawana, who played in the first half. Hands off to Calvin Camp. First play of the second half. Sneaks to the sideline. And then scoots for a few. He he run, Blankenship knocked him out. He runs over there behind Hughes. They, they bring Hughes in the game and say, we're going to find out if you're ready to play. <laughs> and they run right to his side. And I thought he has done a decent job as a run blocker so far this year. The Greensboro, North Carolina, made a first year starter. Reynolds played fake. It's Grant DeBose, that post route that we saw go for a touchdown in the first half. This time put Charlotte in middle Tennessee field position. Got the 20-yard pass on Ross. Yeah, he fakes the play inside zone again, and then he skies the ladder, DeBose. And when you're able to sky the ladder, it gives you more options on that pass. Quick tempo for Charlotte. Zips to Victor Tucker right on the hash. Tucker accelerates to the 20. It was defended by Quincy Riley. And right out of the shoot, Chris Reynolds is firing. That's a good release off the line of scrimmage by number one, Victor Tucker. And you're going against Riley, who's playing with confidence. That's a veteran winning off the line. First and 10. Again, play action. Similar look to DeBose. Skies it over his head. Yeah, Ross said, I had enough. <laughs> you you got to stop with all this. You're not just going to come at me. <laughs> mouthpiece. That, that's the old school mouthpiece. <laughs> but uh, the, the, this, both of these receivers are active, and, and they've got a good challenge with this secondary. This secondary is not going to back down because you make a couple of catches against them. I've seen them give up touchdowns in each of the games they've played, but they continue to compete, and I think that's what Scott Schaefer relies on them to do. Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator, for Middle Tennessee, the former head coach and defensive coordinator at Syracuse. Second down and 10. Calvin Kent on tackle left. Crashes to the 19. Four yard pickup. Quincy Riley, DQ Thomas combined on the stop. Tonight's red zone is brought to you by Verizon. And those are the Charlotte numbers in the red zone been important for them to capitalize. They've done it in a couple of big spots this year. Two wins the first two weeks. Duke and Gardner Webb. Duke, their first win against a Power 5 opponent in program history. Coming off of a loss last week against Georgia State. Third down and eight. DeBose in motion. Reynolds looks left. Rolls back right. Has to keep it on the ground himself. Belted down by Kinley, the defensive end. Shy of the first down sticks. 
And with Charlotte in field goal range, we'll see if they just settle for the field goal. Watch number zero, Richard Kinley. This is how you force a fumble. Watch him come from the backside. Bam, right at the end. And those are the times where you cause a fumble. It, it, you get the good defense on the front side, that opens up the backside pursuit. And now Charlotte's left to just try to attempt to tie this game with one of their more consistent players in Cruz. Jonathan Cruz, two for two on field goals so far this year. He's missed 11 of his 44 in his career from 35. Just before the play clock hits zero. And that one might have been touched at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it was blocked. <laughs> a block kick by Middle Tennessee. And that is something that has been a staple of Rick Stockstill's staff. They block kicks. Yes, they do. They did it last week. So you had to know coming in that you have to get the ball off your foot and let it rise. And if you don't, Rick Stockstill's half. Middle Tennessee up 17 14 on the strength of this blocked field goal by number 49 take a look jordan starling inside watch him get his left hand in just gets it in the same area that they blocked the kick a week ago chris from zaylen wood and that in the inside gaps but, but this time it preserves the lead last time they were down i believe 17 to nothing against utsa huge play from starling and he was pretty good on that drive already well, it's hard to get a kick over a moose that's his nickname, Moose. <laughs> Moose Starling. <laughs> it's a block. In fact, Middle Tennessee, every year with Rick Stockstill as the head coach, has blocked a fit, a field goal. So they have made that a characteristic of their program. Have the football, but going the wrong way to start. Well, they had five penalties in the first half. Can't start off in the second half with another. False start, offense number six. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Our referee Toby Johnson has been busy. So that is Jonathan Cruz. Now has missed 12 field goals in his career. Fourth year as Charlotte's kicker. First and 15. Wheel pattern to the near side. Isaiah got things bobbles and can't corral it in bounds. Ruled incomplete. I think he's gonna have a flag though on Geo Howard, number four. Unless they say that ball was uncatchable. I believe that's Howard who's had his struggles this year. We talked about it, the Purdue transfer. Charlotte with only two of the game's eight penalties to this point. Maybe not. They seem to be taking quite a bit of time. Pass interference. Defense number one. Correction. Number, number four. 15-yard four. Yeah. penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So Geo Howard was caught. You know, he's going against a guy that likes to shake on the outside and gapings and and that's his face guarding. That's, you have more speed than him, which is surprising to me that he doesn't turn. Just You don't have to necessarily turn all the way back, but turn to the inside shoulder. Cunningham floats. Marshall zooms for the first down. And a big play for Middle Tennessee in the passing game on a play to the flat. A gain of 17 before Tyler Murray makes the stop. A lot of misdirection uh, in their game. You can see the misdirection. They're going one way. No, we're going the other way. And now we're throwing it back that way. And they're getting Marshall involved, a guy who was a receiver now playing tight end. Brad Anderson drives through the pile past midfield and into charlotte territory step up warner ladder and help football coaches find a cure for duchenne muscular dystrophy visit coach to cure md.org first play in charlotte territory of the second half for middle tennessee here's chase cunningham flush to the right off balance jumping the throw a lot of heat on the pass for Jimmy Marshall. It's incomplete. Those plays don't show up on the stat sheet, but when you can get outside and beat the contain and get the ball off and save your team a lost yardage play, uh, you keep your team on schedule. Now it's third and five manageable. You limit maybe some of their defensive 
you know, capability on this down. You you have a lot of openings now on third down, four or five. Or you said you wanted to see this crowd get engaged here in the second half. Here's an opportunity for Club Lit to do so. Third down and four. Low snap. Cunningham picks it up. Still alive. Jumps. Tosses. Nearly picked. It was picked. Lance McMillan kept the foot in bounds as Charlotte gets the big play the defensively. The interception. First down, Charlotte. Is the foot down on the catch? Oh, that's close. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he was trying to still corral it, and that was an excellent, excellent job by our crew of showing exactly that. When his foot was trying to come down. Uh, then <laughs> you're going to get an opportunity to bring it in, but the foot's out of bounds at that point. So uh, they, they should take another look at that one. Because it does mean something. It will be yeah, fourth down, down and they run the ball. Like, I, I don't know that that's a, a catch at all. Field position switch, if anything. Now, now, now that, that that's a different look Rolling at it. Rolling on the field of an interception is under further review. Yeah, that 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 that, that, that was a different look, and that, that that it was the same look, and I just got a different look at it <laughs> because that, that looked more. You were just in your glasses, <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know if it was a different look. It was I looked at it different. <laughs> he had a great shot. I, he, that was pretty good by him. And first time I saw it, like no way, because he was still trying to corral it. But that second look. It's like, is the dress blue or is it gold and white? Right. It depends on when you look at it. Because it, at, at first, doesn't have it here, right? Now he corrals it there. Oh, not yet. Oh, whoa, he's out of bounds now. Now I'm back. <laughs> but then he looks like he goes back in. That's going to be tough. Enough to overturn, I doubt. You know. <laughs> My thing is, if he's initially out of bounds first, you can't be the first to touch it. So then that would also negate from the illegal touching standpoint. So that, that, that's another thing to kind of look at. But I don't know if there's enough evidence to say he was out of bounds first. What do you think? That's it looks like the initial toe that comes down is out of bounds. Yeah, but yeah. then when it slides back to get exactly. the rest of the foot down, it slides in. But if that toe is down out of bounds on the catch, yeah, that's yeah. what I see. But again, your question for is it enough to overturn right, it? Right, right. I know Rick Stock still hopes it was enough to overturn. That was a deep breath. And I understand it because the, your team is, and we just talked about Cunningham, right, avoiding those mistakes uh, when he ran out of bounds. And then on that play, kind of an unnecessary throw. Well, Ooh. how does the low snap change the it, game? It does, that? it does. And, and, and then that's a great point because if you, you had the low snap, now you, you're discombobulated, right? And you're just trying to do your frenetic nature running out of bounds. But they're taking a long time to look at this, so. It'd be pretty interesting to see if that initial. That was the type of play to get this Jerry Richardson Stadium crowd into it. They call their postgame locker room celebration, Charlotte, when they win club lit. But I almost think it's club lit as soon as you step into the yeah, stadium. Yeah. The music they play, the way the crowd acts, the sideline, the way they dance. And I think as the game, it seems like they begin to get more excited when nightfall comes. When it, when it gets <laughs> night, they, 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 it's almost like the club. Yes. <laughs> After further video review, the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Okay. The defender gained control possession oh, oh. of the ball. I guess the glasses were right. <laughs> the second battle. looks the best look. Second looks the best look. So Rick Stock still. Gets the fortunate ruling there, but here's the low snap. Oh, man, they, they, they got England Chisholm, I believe, in motion. And, and then number 62, Jordan Palmer with the low snap. And <laughs> Miss Chisholm is down the field. He, he didn't even <laughs> He got lucky on that one. Every, all parties involved. You don't get as much of a minus if you're Jordan Palmer. And really, the referees let Cunningham off the hook. Not an ill-advised pass. <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty good. Lance McMillan almost brought that in. <laughs> One toe down in bounds, but couldn't get it. So it's fourth down. Very good athleticism by him. Kyle Ulbrich, junior punter. 
Cameron Dollar, the returner for Charlotte. It's called. Moves up to the 10 yard line. That's where Charlotte will begin. Their next drive down three. It's an action packed bull riding clash as the toughest sport on dirt. It's to Denwood, South Dakota for the Monster Energy Invitational. Catch PBR Unleash the Beast Sunday night, 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. So Charlotte got off to a great start. Remember, they scored two of the game's first three touchdowns. Their last four, some rough times for Chris Reynolds and company. Last drive, pretty successful, but the, the field goal being blocked, which is you, you mentioned it being a staple of the Blue Raiders pro program, but this is an important drive to get some continuity back going. Tight end in motion, that is Taylor Thompson. First down handoff, Bird, the Iowa transfer. He's been splitting time with Calvin Camp. Also, Shavon McEachern gets in the three-headed monster attack for Charlotte. They ride the hot hand to lead to close to 200 rushing yards per game. Now, Devin Curtis and, 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 and Davis, who changed his number from 6 to 10 this week, and I guess that had a lot to do with <laughs> Bailey Hockman leaving the program, but th those two guys are playing a lot here at linebacker for Middle Tennessee. The number 10 was open. Second down and four. Reynolds claps for the snap. Quick delivery down the seam. That's the tight end, Ryan Carrier, his second catch of the season, right in front of Gregory Great and Jalen Jackson. Gain of 15. Pretty quick release. You've got some pressure. In his face by the guy we just talked about, Davis. He's tough and boy. <laughs> you know what? Davis almost jumped over top of him. <laughs> High hurdles for Jarante <laughs> Davis. First down handoff, Shavon McEacher. Mm. Clip down. Reed Blankenship climbing up the all-time tackle list at Middle Tennessee. Again, an open field tackle. You don't see a lot of help on his tackles, right? You watch him tackle, there's normally they're putting him in positions where he has to make one-on-one -on -one tackles. Three active players, he's right up there. Remember, he had to quarantine for more than 40 days last year. A bunch of, he never tested positive for COVID. It was a lot of his roommates that caused him to keep going back into quarantine. Now he's coming off of a broken leg injury. Reynolds on second and long floats a pass to the near sideline. It's incomplete with Grant DeBose, the one he was looking for. Cody Smith provided pressure. Teldrick Ross in the area defensively. Yeah, Ross gave him a reprieve on that one because he definitely had an opportunity to go up and take that ball away from Charlotte. DeBose already a big night. Five catches, 64 yards, two first quarter touchdowns. So they may bring some pressure here. Third down and nine. And here's where the pressure sometimes comes from Scott Schaefer. He's not afraid. They rush four. Reynolds, same area of the field. Tucker there backpedals and brings it in. Teldrick Ross was covering, but Victor Tucker made the catch. But give credit to Reynolds getting it over the head of Ross. Yeah, because they went to the zone. They actually played a zone. It was like a two deep zone. And now you've got to get over the top of your Gregory Great number one. He doesn't. So it looks like it's on Ross, but it's really the responsibility of Great to get over the top. He got off the jump of Reynolds' release a little bit late. 28 yard pickup. In Middle Tennessee territory. Reynolds, who already broke the career touchdown record in this game with his two first quarter touchdowns, keeps it himself. Moves through one arm tackle before running into a wall shy of the 35. Jordan Ferguson leading that wall after a four yard pickup. Reynolds last year tore his labor on the very first play of the season. Never really had that same arm strength. Mm -hmm. Elected to not have the route that involves surgery, rehab his way back. He didn't miss. Any time last year with a torn labor, I'm just kept at it. He's tough. Former baseball player. Second down and six. And a run right into the line of scrimmage. Jordan Starling leading the tackling group for Middle Tennessee. Zadrick Bird picks up a yard. 
for a day in. Rasuo is going to have to come in now. I think just lost his helmet again. I guess lost his helmet again. And now you got Thompson coming in the game for Charlotte. You also got number nine, Elijah Spencer, who had the fumble earlier. He's in the game. This is a big down for the Middle Tennessee defense. A big down without Gis. He is, what the coaches call it, the best offensive lineman on the team. Mm -hmm. Third and five. Camp the running back. Tight end is Thompson. Five-man pressure. Reynolds escapes right. Fires down the sideline. The bows and bounds. Roll the catch. Wow. A third down conversion for Charlotte. 18 yards. And this has to just be painful for Scott Schaefer. Look at this throw, first of all. Oh, man. The acrobatics of the bows on the sideline. On that his, is... On his tryout with Charlotte, and coach said it took about three routes. <laughs> oh, yeah, this dude's special. <laughs> Reynolds looking for fade. Spencer goes up. And comes down with six. Caught it on Jalen Jackson. Charlotte takes the lead. Now you're going to get the one-on-one -on -one opportunities against these corners, and that's something that you know going into the game. you got to convert. And, and when you get these opportunities, particularly when you're a freshman like Spencer, you're trying to replace a player who had, in 2019, almost 600 yards. You're replacing him in the lineup. They're expecting you to make those types of plays the freshman delivers. He's 6'2". Use every bit of his height as Charlotte up by four points. On a play, a similar one the Bows had in the first half. Put Charlotte in the lead. The Chargers against Mahomes and the Chiefs, Bengals, Steelers, and the Dolphins in Vegas against the Raiders. Check your local listings. It begins with noon Eastern with the NFL today. Now, former Charlotte 49er, current Pittsburgh Steeler Alex Highsmith surprised Dayon Rasuo before the season. Uh, Dayon, I got some special people here for you. Oh, oh. I want to see you. And I am beyond excited to announce that you, Dehan, oh, yeah. That's always great. A surprise scholarship for Dehan Rasuo, the Greensboro, North Carolina native. You just always fun to see the hard work rewarded. And that's emotional for your team when you see somebody that's worked as hard as he has as a freshman all-conference player, and he's played so many positions for your team. You're happy for him, and it's genuine happiness. It's not fake. Over the head of Jalen Lane. Middle Tennessee back to work down by four. What a drive for Charlotte. Mixing up the run in the pass. Grant DeBose, Elijah Spencer, two big targets. And those were two key members. Remember what we talked about in the first half. That this team has not done well in the third quarters of games. We're talking about Middle Tennessee. The first and third quarters, they've been outscored 43-7 to seven so far this year. They've got to step up now. This is really a, a moment for this football team behind a new quarterback uh, to kind of make it to say things are going to change. Because uh, you're not going to give yourself an, a chance in the fourth if you don't have a productive third quarter. Middle Tennessee so far through three games, the ones before this, were struggling running the ball. Cunningham will throw it here. Cross body throw to the middle of the field to a sliding Isaiah Gathings. It is a first down for Middle Tennessee. And I think they got to challenge these Charlotte defensive backs. Uh, the, the, so far, Charlotte's been a little bit better against the run than they normally have, uh, but still have given up yards. On a throw to the screen. DJ England Chisholm makes the first player miss and Gallup's there midfield. BJ Turner finally stops him. When you got 10 5, 100 meter speed and you get a block, you better make the tackle. Uh, he makes one player miss, and then if not for just an outstanding effort for BJ Turner, then that could have gone a lot longer. Just shy of midfield. Cunningham with time off the Charlotte Blitz. England Chisholm has a step, blazes down the near sideline. He burned Howard. Touchdown, Middle Tennessee.
51 yards. They get the one on one coverage outside pretty good protection up front and, and then Howard. This is a guy that they really I mean he's, he looks like he's a little despondent but England Chisholm says I don't care. I mean I scored in week one and now I've scored again and this is kind of a breakout year a little bit for the former Berkeley High School South Carolina player who as we mentioned ran 10 5 and 100 meters. He still plays some gunner for this football team or he has. He's all over the place, and that was a heck of a play. How about Chase Cunningham? I mean, first yeah. start of the year, yeah. adversity down, second half, comes right onto the field, leads a touchdown drive. Zeke Rankin, extra point true. A drive that only took 48 seconds. I bet you DJ England Chisholm can run 100 much quicker than that. 24-21, <laughs> Middle Tennessee. Seconds. And the, take the lead 24 21. It's been a fun one from Jerry Richardson Stadium with Corey Chavis, Chris Lewis here. And these receivers make it play both teams all over the field. Yeah, and Chase Cunningham has to say, hey, you want me to have the job? I, I throw it to all these guys. And, and they can make big plays. The speed of England Chisholm, along with the size of Marshall, uh, the competitiveness of a guy like Jerry Pierce, and, and then the quickness of Jalen Lane, a formidable receiving core, but. Give credit to this offensive line. After the week they had a, a last week against UTSA, the way they played tonight, that has to be noticed. Both teams coming off of losses for Charlotte, their first loss of the year. Middle Tennessee looking to break a two-game losing streak. Charlotte on the kick return. That is Shadrick Bird, a flag down. He stopped at the 26. So we'll check the special teams penalty. Game has had more than a few penalties. And a lot of them have taken a while yeah, to yeah. bring to notice. And, and I understand because the, the, these are pretty. The, both teams they they move at pretty good paces, and so that that has a little bit to do with it. And then some of the penalties have been hard to kind of uh, decipher. Uh, and multiple. return holding. Return team number thirty. For the last half the distance to the goal. First down, Charlotte. Time now for Pound for Pound by Rogue Fitness. Correct. You can't fall down. You can't get lined up late. That's the best way to put it for, for Gio Howard. He gets a little bit lined up late. You got to know who you're going against. Right here. Do you know who you're going against? He's one ten five. And then I just believe Howard has to play better. I, I think he's a, he's shown flashes. I like the way he competed last week after giving up some plays uh, against Georgia State. But... He's got to play better. They're depending on him to be a lockdown corner, the Purdue transfer. Because they want to blitz and send pressure. Yeah. You're relying on your defensive backs to hold up. On first down, Reynolds, quick out pattern. That is the big hands of Grant DeBose, slung down by both Riley and Blankenship. Because both QBs have been excellent so far today. Chris Reynolds on the last drive. Just in a groove. He's three touchdowns, no picks, 250 passing yards. A little bit streaky. I think that's what you're seeing tonight. And it's not rainy. It's good weather, and, and he's in control. He's in control of his ball. A lot of times people wonder about being in control in terms of a leadership. In terms of his ball placement, he's in control. He's less than six feet tall. Throws behind a couple of receivers on a slant pattern. Both the Bows and Tucker were in the area. Ross got his paws on it for Middle Tennessee. Well, that was out of control. <laughs> hey, now you, you go to your off speed pitch here. And this is, I mean, we're going back to the knuckleball days on that one. And they clearly nearly a pick by Ross or Rob. Take your pick. But that's what we mean when we say streaky. You get into these four out of five on one drive, the next the next drive, third down and six. Will you bring pressure? Do you have to if you're Schaefer after that last pass? Four down lineman. The four who rush. On third down, nearly intercepted. Looking for DeBose. Reed Blankenship had the best chance at it for Middle Tennessee. Yeah, those were the plays Blankenship was making back in 2018. We referenced it. This is a chance. You can end it. 
You, you read the quarterback's eyes. This is what he's special at. Eight career interceptions, nine, whatever it is. But Blankenship has to get back to making those types of plays. It shows you he's close, but not quite there. That's a play two or three years ago he makes. It's coming off of an injury that he had a couple of years ago, a broken leg, eight career interceptions, just missed number nine. And he might have had a touchdown as well. Bailey Rice to punt it. And Jalen Lane to return. Mm. Got it off. DJ England Chisholm, who made the touchdown, he was close to blocking that punt. Takes a great Charlotte roll inside the 25, settles at the 23. Special teams, always an adventurous season for Charlotte. <laughs> Got the punt off. And it's time for Middle Tennessee to go to work with a lead by three. Can they stay hot? Up on it. And the both <laughs> he's also from down that way, right? You, you, you're talking about Miles College, the transfer, and, and what a performance he's had tonight. Both players uh, leaving an imprint, going against each other on, on the opposite side of the ball, leaving an imprint. All right, speaking of leaving a mark, DJ England Chisholm had a 51-yard touchdown on the last drive for Middle Tennessee. Beat Geo Howard in coverage. This is the first drive since. Blue Raiders with the lead and the football. Chase Cunningham, his first start of the season, replacing Bailey Hockman, who left the team earlier this week. Gets out of bounds for a game of close to eight, but a flag down in the backfield. Run out by number two, Justin Wisdom. Penalty marker down. Holy. Offense number six. Two yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first down. That's the seventh penalty on Middle Tennessee. There's the penalty, you know, getting, the, getting those hands inside, but extended a little bit against Ursary. And, and Marshall made the transition to tight end. He's been a receiver, and they've welcomed. They put a smile on Coach Stockstill's face. That's how he described it. Uh, and he's been accepted that position change. Uh, Got to get a little bit better in terms of being a blocker. He's improving. Field position not improving for Middle Tennessee and mm. a laser to the far side of the field in and out of the hands of Yusef Ali. But a big catch earlier on in the first half of this game. Second down, 20 to go for Middle Tennessee. You don't want to waste this drive. You don't want to come out and just say, okay, we're, we're satisfied with being up three. You got to get some productive plays out of this drive. Uh, I, I think maybe attacking the middle of the field and these safeties at some point has to come back into play. But can your offensive line hold up long enough for you to do it? 24 passing attempts for Cunningham, seven runs for Cunningham. Leaves the team in passes and rushing attempts. Here on the end around to Jalen Lane, who has plenty of speed, plays a lot on special teams as a returner, zooms for seven. Third down and long. The rushing attack for Middle Tennessee, much better than it usually is. Again, they're the fourth worst rushing attack in the nation. Charlotte, the third worst in the nation at stopping the run. Yeah, it's kind of you, you're meeting the best of both worlds, meeting a little bit. The worst of both worlds. Yeah, well, well. the, but the other team is the best, though, right? <laughs> Depends on the perspective. Right. We got a chance. Third and long. Cunningham is pressured, navigates through it. And then is upended at the 26. Trey Creamer, who's a corner. Lance McMillan slow to get up. It is fourth down, and looks like McMillan's okay. We give Marcus West and Brandon Cooper some credit defensively in terms of just what we talked about the run game because at 111 yards, that's a significant improvement for Charlotte. And, and and that is and in a sense even that tackle right there. Those are the tackles they've been missing It's Kyle Uber back on the field to get the punt off Cameron dollar Continues to be the returner for Charlotte Punt is clean Nice spinner Fair catch called at the 22 that was an excellent punt Field position, such a big deal. These two teams even close to it so far. Middle Tennessee up by three. The top ten. Texas A&M and Arkansas. Highlight game this week in the AP poll. As Oregon 
Perhaps that surprise team, at least so far, that is punctured into that top four. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing that I look at is Texas A&M and Arkansas on CBS. I mean, at the end of the day, can they move the ball? I'm talking about Arkansas and this Texas A&M defense. Texas A&M has given up about 35% on third downs. The Marvin Leal and Jaden Peavy are two of the better defensive tackles, defensive linemen, defensive ends in the nation. And they're going to be tough to run the ball against. SEC on CBS tomorrow. On first down, Taylor Thompson, the redshirt freshman from Prattville, Alabama, is swallowed up by Quincy Riley. He's played okay tonight. He's, he's a competitor. And I think that's the one thing that, that Scott Schaefer likes. That's why he's still in some playing time. Remember, they're kind of rotating these corners now. In fact, you, you get a lot of work from Trey Flewellen, number 17. He's their nickel. He's an important part of what they do. He's right here. He kind of moves around. They blitz him sometimes. They, they, they use him in a lot of different ways. They've got a versatile defensive backfield. Second down after the loss of two. The all-time leader in passing yards and touchdowns for Charlotte. Pivots to the opposite side of the field. Outruns a couple of defenders to the sideline near the 30. There's J.R. Bibbins to escort him out of bounds. Brings up third down, but a good scamper that time by Reynolds. What you like about it, they talked about keeping him in the cage. Well, this time you let him get out. And when you let him get out, this is what he can do. I thought he showed pretty good wheels out running Carroll from Georgia State a week ago on a third down and six. Similar to that last play. Now you're third down and four. You got to keep him in the cage again. You don't want his legs to be the reason they stay on the field. He's approaching 1,000 career rushing yards, Chris Reynolds, the fourth year starting quarterback. Third down and four. It's a handoff to Shadrick Bird, trying to get those tough yards up the middle. But it looks like he's close to the first down. He needed four. Give him four and a half. First down for Charlotte. That was a physical run. And good blocking up front by Hunter Kelly and Ashton Gist. One of the guys we haven't really talked about tonight, number 70, Dimitri Emmanuel. Uh, he's a very good football player. And one of the players that kind of reminds me of New England Patriots guard Shaq Mason. Not as, not as fast, but... Uh, he's got really good power. And Corey, you were talking about at the top, this needing to be a bounce back game for the offensive line, really for both teams. See how they hold up on the first and ten. It's a give to Bird. Bird, who deems to the near side of the field and finally clipped by Blankenship. I, I like the way Blankenship, he, he throws his body around. And, and that's the thing that, and sometimes it gets him into trouble, quite honestly, because I think he should take another step in some of his open field tackles. But now you put him in second down and seven, and they close down this formation again with the bunch set to the right. Second down. Keep it with Bird. Powers through a couple of tackles. A stiff arm against Jalen Davis. Continues to ride it into Middle Tennessee territory all the way up to the 42. Feed him. He's hungry. Jadrick Bird. <laughs> yeah, he is hungry. And one of the things you're getting, this is just simply an inside. He, he shows good vision. Who misses the tackle? Blankenship. We talked about taking that extra step. He steps through the tackle attempt the Blankenship on that play. And Bird, when you run as, as hard as he does, you have to pick your feet up in trash. That's the stuff around your ankles and feet when you're running through the hole. It's a break. Comes to the sidelines. Calvin Camp in. A low snap. This play is live. Reynolds. He might have hit the ground before that throw to the sideline. That was close. Kinley came slicing right in. And when we talk to the defensive. Eligible receiver number 14 was in the area. Second down. Yeah, but I think your point, you got to kind of look at what you said, Chris, is his knee on the ground. You get the low snap. He's putting his mouthpiece in. And it, is that knee on the ground? I don't think so. I think he got it off just before. It was an excellent shot. But, look, you, you got him in a, a little bit of a frenetic pace now. I, I'd say keep bringing the pressure if you're Scott Shaver. Third quarter winding down. Last play of the third frame. Calvin Camp, big hole, Camp accelerates, has more crease down the near sidelines, and steps in. 34 yards to the house for Calvin Camp, the home run hitter, knocks that out the park. They get to the right side, it's an excellent block out there by Taylor Thompson, and 
He had another missed tackle in the open field by Blankenship. And this time, Camp says, I'm not going to just get, you know, 10 and 11 yards. I'm going to go to the house. How about that as an exclamation point on a third quarter? Both teams with big plays. A 44 yard run. Longest play of the game for Charlotte. Extra point is through. Charlotte retakes the lead. The smooth moves. Calvin Camp, rep in Hickory, North Carolina, won't be denied. Finger in the air. Charlotte with the lead. Back and forth, Charlotte leads by four. Our PNC Bank game summary. And both teams rushing the ball. Charlotte expected to do it. Coming in, one of the better rushing teams in the nation. Middle Tennessee, one of the worst. But Calvin Kemp with his 44-yard touchdown run on that last drive. And that's the thing that's gotten club lit, ready to go and engaged. Club lit, it's Charlotte's sideline. <laughs> Playing off the name Charlotte. They like to celebrate success. Camp has all the reason to celebrate. He does, and he's excited. He knows that last week he kind of cost his team, right? In the red zone, the fumble. He came back on a mission this week. You talked about him having to prove. Does he have something to prove? You bet he does. And so far tonight, he's come through. Watching Charlotte's sideline makes me wish I was playing football instead of broadcasting football. Looks so fun. But here's the last play. Well, anytime you get a, a, a player, first of all, you got to make somebody miss. And that's Blankenship. And then down the field, look at the receivers. You get both receivers blocking 20 and 30 yards down the field. That's outstanding effort. And number one, and one of the guys that was blocking was number 14, Grant DeBose. So when you have a guy like him who's a guy who's caught two touchdowns blocking for your teammate, you want to win. That's the message you're sending as a football team. Because remember, the next week people watch that video and they see that effort blocking down the field. So now it's on Chase Cunningham to begin the fourth quarter. First time starting this season, Cunningham rifles deep down the left side. It hits the ground late, Jimmy Marshall at the 30-yard line, no catch. Tyler Murray is the one who's confirming the incompletion. Well, he made a catch like this against UTSA, but he did it with one hand. This time, all the way down to the ground, I think that's a catch. Now, they, now they got to go back and take a look at that because you can't tell me it's not a catch after he's hit the ground. That's, that's a catch. So they need to go back and take a look at it. No way this is not a catch. And that's a former defensive back saying that. Yeah, it's a catch. No question about it. You got you got to do something to stop pausing. Oh, play. man, that is, that is a wasted opportunity. Second down, Cunningham gets rid of it. This time finds Pierce. Pierce wow. racking up the catches, but Corey, you're stunned that they didn't take yeah, a look at that I, I can't believe it. I, 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 I can't believe it. I, that, that was... <laughs> I guess you talk about finishing to the, he finished to the ground. The ball got stripped after he was at the ground. And Rick Starksdale is beside himself. He can't believe it. It's hard to call the next play. <laughs> if you're Britt Dearman, their offensive coordinator, I mean, come on. That, that is not, it's not what you want. All the calls they made tonight, they don't make the one they need to. The referees. Third and eight. Cunningham. Pressure to the right. Stumble. Flip. Warren oh got there. <laughs> to lane. It's not enough for the first <laughs> down, but are you kidding me Man. with that pass? Wow. Man, that's this is a, this is pretty good athleticism now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> We're at the schoolyard. <laughs> he completely gets around, just keeps his balance. His knee might have hit first yeah. before the throw. I wonder if they'll take a look at that one. They're not looking at anything, <laughs> apparently. They say, go ahead and play. <laughs> Kyle Ulbrich in the punt. Cameron Dollar remains back for Charlotte. Angled towards the sideline. Sliding catch by the receiver. Cameron Dollar at the 35. Jimmy Marshall looked like he had this catch. Then the ball came out. Ruled incomplete, wasn't reviewed. Uh, points. Jimmy Marshall on the last drive for Middle Tennessee a moment ago. This play looked to you, Corey, to be a catch. 
Yeah, I think he had control of it all the way down to right there. I mean, he's down right? at that point. When you rip the ball out after he's down, he's down. That you, you got to blow the whistle at some point. He's got the ball right here. One, two steps. His butt hits the ground. He's down. And now you rip the ball out. You, you got to go back and look at that. It, it, no question it's a catch. Jimmy Marshall got robbed. Middle Tennessee got robbed on that play. That's going to be one that they're going to turn in, but it's going to be too late when you turn it in to the officials later on in the week. They ruled it incomplete. They did not stop play to review it. So Charlotte on first down. That is Elijah Spencer on the slant right at midfield. Caught it in front of Ross. Pick up a 14. And that play has been one that's been there for the 49ers all night. They've kind of taken turns on who who wants to get in the spot? They're probably battling on the in the huddle. No, let me get it. No, let me get it. Because every time they throw that pass, it, it's been completed tonight. Neither team has had a two-score lead in this game yet. Touchdown here for Charlotte would do that. Early movement. Looks like a free play for Charlotte. And Reynolds recognizes, goes deep. Debose, the intended receiver. Ross and Blankenship knock it away. Well, you don't know it's a free play if you're a defensive back. I like to see them finish that interception on the other end. Offside, and the moves is on the snap. Defense number 49, five yard penalty, remaining first down. But an but an astute play by Reynolds. He kind of caused that with the the clap of the hands. Sometimes those claps of the hands that you you'll sometimes get a penalty for that if you're influencing the guys with that clap. But that time, no, and Starling was offside. Making the defensive play to knock it away was Teldrick Ross. The Middle Tennessee cornerback is still down. They make it Georgia native. And the one thing they do have is some depth at corner. Uh, so they, they, they can, they do have some replacements ready. Mm. Yeah. Climbed the ladder but fell hard. He might have gotten the breath knocked out of him. Now, if you look at what he's been able to do, though, he's taken one to the house against Monmouth. He's he's also been very competitive down the field in coverage, including in the red zone against Virginia Tech and some others. Pretty good season so far from Ross. They cannot afford to lose him in the fourth quarter. One of the multi-sport high school products that are on this Middle Tennessee defense. Rick Stock still seeing. One of his better defensive players leave, but Ross was a baseball player and a quarterback in high school. Yeah, he had like 73 RBIs as junior <laughs> and senior seasons in, in baseball and hit 385. He's got pretty good hand-eye coordination and has shown up in 2021. Jalen Jackson takes over that spot in the secondary. Remember, it was an offside, so five yards. First and five for Charlotte. Calvin Camp gets the gift across the 40 to the 39. Camp, right, remember, had that 44-yard touchdown to give Charlotte the lead. And, and that left side of that offensive line, they continue to run behind that side. And, and they've kind of gone back to, I believe, 79 this time, Nawana at, at left tackle. Charlotte, quick tempo on a snap. Camp handoff. He is lassoed down at the 40, right at the line of scrimmage by Devin Curtis. Freshman out of Nashville. Brings up second down. Charlotte looking to move to three and one. This is their conference opener. Two Conference USA East teams doing battle. Middle Tennessee already a conference game so far. They lost to UTSA last time out by two touchdowns. Second down. Again, a flag down. Perhaps a free play. Back shoulder for DeBose. He brings it in inside the 20. Reynolds is in command right now for the 49ers. Well, DeBose is the guy that he's gone to in most of the situations in one on one. And, and you get a free play again. Number zero. That penalty declined. The result of the play is the first down. You go to the guy that comes in the game in Jalen Jackson. And so he's one on one with him over here. And he kind of. He, he kind of loses his place in terms of finding the ball, and that was a good adjustment to it 
by DeBose. 22 yard gain by Grant DeBose. Kinley was the one who was offsides. In the red zone, this is big for Middle Tennessee to get a stop. Hold them to a field goal and remain down just one touchdown. Reynolds again hands off. Calvin Kemp tries right side and gets knocked down. The 15 yard line by Gregory Grace. Pick up of three. Coming into this game, Middle Tennessee allowed teams to get to the red zone nine times and giving up seven touchdowns in those nine opportunities. They need to come up big to keep their team down only one touchdown. And remember, they did block a field goal earlier on in this game. Charlotte patient, Reynolds and his team lined up, play clock running low, and Will Healy sees that and calls timeout. And you don't want to use a timeout, though, at the beginning of the, the fourth quarter. We'll be back timeout. in 30 seconds from Jerry Charlotte. Richardson Stadium in Charlotte. A little bit casual getting lined up. And hey, close game in the fourth. You need those. I, I don't know if I would take the take the time out because you're in field goal range already. And, and if you take the five yard penalty, it's still second down. Uh, the taking the time out there, the wasting that when it could come back later. I, I don't know if I would have made that call. Four. Keep it at second and seven. The play is a handoff to Shadrick Bird. Off tackle has the edge to the pylon. Dives in. Touchdown, but a flag down at the 10. Let's take a look at it, the left tackle again. Chaboise Nawana, number 79. Nawana is the Arkansas transfer. Well, we mentioned he's gotten a lot of playing time here tonight, and he's been rotating with Jackson Hughes, number 77. That's a big ruling. Charlotte got into the end zone there. Their offense is still on the field. I think they're convinced that this might be against Charlotte. We get that plus the delay of game penalty that you avoided by taking the timeout, and now you've kind of wasted that timeout that you used. <laughs> Fair point. You lost the yards anyway. If the penalty is confirmed. Seems like they have some long discussions, this crew. But they've already moved it back. Moving. Offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul remains at second down. We didn't get a number there, but Nawana was the one that you saw. You see, he kind of got him on the edge and he got a tackle number. He finished. I give him credit now. He finished on Kenley. But he's grabbing around in that area. And that's where they got the holding call, but. He didn't just stop after he yelled. He, he he jumped on top of him and he finished through the down. You gotta like that part, but you don't like being backed up in this situation if you're Charlotte. Back to the 19 on a second and 11. Reynolds looks right. Sets up a screen to the opposite side. Bird with a blocker in front. Jukes the middle of the field. Gallops into the end zone. A screen pattern for 19 yards. Charlotte up two scores for the first time. Well, that's a delayed screen. And they're going to get behind number 70. Demetri Emanuel says no way against Gregory Great. And then he makes Blankenship miss along with several other defensive backs. Anybody in his way, Bird flew away from. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Charlotte flying high here at home. Club lit. Jerry Richardson Stadium. Up two scores for the first time in this game. Jonathan Cruz wants to make it 11 to match his jersey number. Does so. Charlotte up 35-24. Yeah, you get one bird in the open field. It's time to fly. I'm going to go behind a manual, make somebody miss, and go into the end zone. Skying like a bird.
They scored the game's last two touchdowns, have an 11-point lead over Middle Tennessee. College football continues next with a Mountain West matchup as UNLV takes on the 22nd-ranked Fresno State Bulldogs. Keep it right here on CBS Sports Network, which leads us to Worth to Watch, brought to you by Principal Financial Group. And Bulldog quarterback Jake Hayner, certainly worth a watch. And Fresno State had an impressive showing against UCLA last time out. Yeah, it's toughness. Uh, you, you can't in those situations. Can your quarterback be tough when you need him to be? Hayner certainly was. And that in itself, uh, particularly after Dorian Thompson Robinson led UCLA down for they were winning the game, he comes back with the injury to take it from the Bruins. Jason Knapp, Dante Whitner will have that one after this. Touchbacks for Middle Tennessee at the 25 to start this, but a screen pattern just well executed for Charlotte. And it's always offensive linemen who have to release and do a good job on screens. And, and take a look right here at number 70, Demetri Emanuel. Watch what he does to a corner in space. He's one-on-one -on -one with the corner, and I got to make this block against Quincy Riley, and he does. And then that allows Bird to put on the show and fly away. So if you don't have that block initially from Emmanuel, Bird can't get out and, and get down. And, and, and Emmanuel's going to get a lot of props in the film room for that block. That was the fourth passing touchdown for Chris Reynolds today, which ties a career high on the day where he becomes the all-time passing touchdowns leader at Charlotte. Chase Cunningham for a response. Jaron Pierce on the first play of the drive. Tyler Murray on the coverage, gain of 17. So Middle Tennessee needs to get to work with just over 10 minutes left. Well, they've been good in the fourth quarter. Last week in the fourth quarter, uh, he was on fire. They're in an all-pass mode, which now if you're a, a defender for Charlotte, particularly Kofi Wardlow and some of these guys on the defensive front, where's Marquise Watts been? You're salivating now in this all-pass mode. Watts wears the number zero for Charlotte. Clean pocket, rifles over the middle. Diving catch by Jimmy Marshall. That time, count the catch, loses the lid as Marcus Robitaille makes the tackle. Well, he's in the middle of the field, and, and they get him isolated against the linebacker, and, and that's number two, Wizard Hunt, and that's a mismatch. And if you can find that matchup with, with him against linebackers all season, you're going to have a lot of success. Pistol set with Anderson behind Cunningham. Steps up, unleashes, down the seam. Over the head of a couple of receivers, England Chisholm and Pierce. Second down and long. You got plenty of time if you're Middle Tennessee. Those shots, I mean, certainly you can take them, uh, but you've got time to be able to get a score, get a stop defensively, and get the ball back. You don't have to just take shots up needlessly against deep zone coverage. And his first start of the season, Cunningham, clean snap. Delivery to the near sideline. Isaiah Gappings can't connect, incomplete. Cedric Ursary there. Well, we've heard so much about Howard, number four, but it's now late in the game, and it's Ursary and also Lance McMillan on the corners, and they're having to come through, and also along with Trey Creamer. And that was a big receiver he was going against. A six foot four, 225 pound receiver who's made those types of catches this season. Third and long, you mentioned Marquise Watts when asked about the offensive line for Middle Tennessee. What he said? He sees opportunity. <laughs> There's an opportunity. Third down and long. Cunningham looking to the near side. Rasul, the running back, slips through one. Close to the first down, which is at the 23. Needed 10, gets 10. Luke Martin makes the stop. You got Watts coming on the pressure, and it's Ursary who misses the tackle. The guy that just covered down the field one-on-one. -on -one. And now in this, even, in, even though you're in a passing formation, just run it. Give Rasul a chance to pick it up right here on fourth and one. They gave him only nine on that last play. Whistle before the action on fourth down as Charlotte burns their second timeout. Oh, wow. Timeout. Charlotte, the second of the half. 30 seconds in the and, and they were actually going to pass the ball on that play, Cunningham. You can see the play fake. He was going to go into a screen to one of his wide receivers to the left. 
Fourth down, one to go. You mentioned running the ball, the key here. But Middle Tennessee, they've had problems running the ball this year. Yeah, they have. And my thing is, if you put the ball in the air and you only had to get one yard, what message do you send to your offensive line? I'm talking about moving forward. You're not going to be able to throw the ball all over the place in Conference USA football. You're going to have to establish a running game at some point. And these are the guys you have. You don't have anybody else that you can go recruit and they can come off the <laughs> – in play so th these guys have got to be able to win in a fourth and one situation to get a first down yeah, their biggest running backs are Tom Mobley we haven't seen him today missed the 2019 game against Charlotte with an injury and even if you go back to the quarterback one game you, you only have a yard to pick up uh, in, in these situations I'm running the football Rasul running back pistol for Cunningham. An early movement for Middle Tennessee on the left side of the line. Wow. On a fourth and one. And we'll wait to make sure that it's on the Blue Raiders, but that look from Rick Stockstill tells the story. I felt like it was on maybe the left side of that line, but. It's a long conversation. Now, there was movement by Charlotte, a defensive shift. And I mean, are they saying that it simulated the snap of the ball? Well, there's been a lot of penalties that they've given to the defensive side of the ball on some of those because they're influencing the, the guys to jump early. Delay a game. Defense disconcerting signals. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. And it's really called unfair clock tactics. And so they, they give the signal and they make a move or, or a sudden maneuver. The offensive line moves the jumps and, and they end up getting a penalty. Yeah. You probably see over there number zero, Marquise Watts. So that's a gift for Middle Tennessee to get the first down on a fourth and one. And Hey, keep it on the ground with Amir Rasul. Yeah, down by two possessions. If you're Middle Tennessee, you want two touchdowns. You don't want to settle for a field goal. They've only attempted one field goal all season, and that was in this game. Brad Anderson, the running back. The receiver to the near side is C.J. Windham. Haven't called his name much. Play fake. Cunningham. Tosses. End zone. Up top for Pierce, it's ruled incomplete. Solomon Rogers in coverage. And another one of those balls that seemed to hang in the air forever. That one's an incomplete pass. It's a good effort by Pierce. And once again, it's about through the ground. And, and again, I see the left knee down, the right knee down. Now, now you see it, the ball come out a little bit later. That's a little bit different than the other one we had with Marshall, because with Marshall, the ball was knocked out late by after he was already down by by the Charlotte defender. I mean right here this is so far so well that left arm is a little bit out of bounds. Yeah, the ball but that moving really too. The only on the field is the The previous play is under review. So this one they'll take a look with. We're referencing a Jimmy Marshall play that was yeah. in the third quarter of this game and a big second and long that would have been a 40 plus yard catch that they didn't take a look at. And that shin being down, it would have to be down. And, and, and he didn't finish. That was an example where he didn't finish the catch through the ground. I don't think that was the case with the Marshall catch earlier. I thought he did finish the catch through the contact at the ground. I, I thought the ball was moving a little bit here as he contacted the ground. And that ball moving there yeah, late almost yeah. renders everything else move, right? Yeah, because if does. you didn't it hold does. on to the catch all the right. way through, then it doesn't matter what the feet do. Exactly. You got to finish that through the ground. So even if that left foot is down and he doesn't finish that catch through the ground, it's going to be an incomplete pass. Whereas on the other one, again, with Marshall, he finished it through the ground, in my opinion, and our, maybe in our opinion, and then it was knocked loose by the defender after it should have already been called down. You can speak for me. <laughs> See, like you well, hesitate. I, mean, I, 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 I thought we agreed. Maybe we did. <laughs> we're on the same page on that one. Uh, hopefully, we're on the same page on that one. That's yeah. definitely incomplete to me. Our referee is Toby Johnson. 
Johnson. So this game has featured Johnson quite a bit. 14 penalties, a couple of reviews. A lot of yards in this game. Both teams are over the 400-yard mark. Charlotte, last couple of touchdowns to build a two-score lead. If this goes to third down and eight, which you got to be thinking if you're Middle Tennessee, is that you've got to, you might want to attack the middle of the field again. Well, look at Pierce right there celebrating. I, really? He, he's, he's thinking that that's a catch, and he's about to be given a touchdown. Well, if the Marshall one wasn't a catch, uh, it, nothing would surprise me. <laughs> After further review, the ruling on the field, the runner completes the process of the catch. The result of the play is a touchdown. <laughs> wow, man, that's something else. So it's a 16 yard score for Jaron Pierce, the red shirt senior from LA. Well, clearly, you get the left foot down as he finished the process of the catch or is it knocked loose. I don't see that as any different than the other catch from Marshall. I, it is, they, they got me tonight. <laughs> I, I give them, and, and let's go ahead and, and look and see what they think about with this two point conversion. This is important because you can make this, you can cut it to a field goal. You only be down by a field goal here. And I, I think maybe some type of sprint out. They optioned the ball to be on that left hash. That's where they elected it. Through that open side of the field. Diving catch by Lane. Two points successful. It's just a field goal game. A play that was a catch after a review by Jaron Pierce. They get the two point conversion to add on Middle Tennessee within a field goal. Continues next with a Mountain West matchup as UNLV takes on the 22nd ranked Fresno State Bulldogs. Keep it here on CBS Sports Network. They'll be lucky if the game in Fresno is as good as this one. <laughs> this score by quarter just tells you how back and forth that this one has been. That Chadwick Bird to return. He scored on a screen pattern on the Charlotte last touchdown. Middle Tennessee, though. With the throw to Pierce that was initially ruled incomplete, overturned after a review. Two points successful. And that's how we're at a three-point game. Kickoff by Payne. Fair catch called by Bird. 25-yard line. So Charlotte got into the end zone on the Bird screen. They're moving the ball up and down that field. They were. They, they, this is their staple play. The inside slant or you skinny post, whatever you want to call it. And now the back shoulder, excellent body control that time by the Bows. And now the screen. Emmanuel makes the block, and then it's showtime. He starts to put the moves on in the open field. And that's really a well constructed drive, I think, by offensive coordinator Mark Carney, who's caught a well of a game. He's gotten Reynolds back. Tough man coverage. First play of the drive from the 25. Reynolds keeps. He has wheels, zips across the 30. Tackle shy of the 35. Short of the first down as Gregory Great knocks him out of bounds. Nine yard pickup on first. That's huge. <laughs> I'm a second and one. You kind of have all your options open. This could actually be a, you can wait. It's a waste now. You take a shot. Instead, it's a screen. DeBose. Couple of blockers in front. Has the first down. Lasso down. Right at the 40. Durante Davis. Tackle for Middle Tennessee with the help of Ross to gain a six. It moves the chains as Charlotte not only wants to move the ball, they want to move that clock up three. And Middle Tennessee has all three timeouts. If they could flip the script and score and, and, and get Charlotte behind, Charlotte's down to one timeout left. So that's a, a huge difference in terms of the management for both teams. Reynolds over 300 yards and four touchdowns. On a day where he becomes the Charlotte all-time passing touchdown leader. Calvin Camp through the initial line. Loses the ball late. Pass midfield. He had the first down. Looked like Charlotte popped back on top of the football. And almost deja vu for Camp, who had a big fumble a week ago in the Charlotte loss. Yeah, that, that, that has to be a little bit alarming on the sidelines, if you will, Healy. And, and, and that was a fumble. Uh, that was enough fumble calls by Reed Blankenship. Clearly a formal camp knows it. 
And boy, Victor Tucker had his back. There's Tucker. That was a, a tremendous alert play from the senior. Tucker saves the day. It was a big game, 13 yards on the ground. First down. Here's Victor Tucker rewarded with the football and has the angle on the near sideline past the 30. Finally bumped out of bounds by DQ Thomas. But a swing route works. First down, 49ers. Well, Tucker gets it. He's got, he got an excellent pocket. <laughs> and Will, he, he's got the arm moving <laughs> up and down the sideline. <laughs> I don't know if he, you know what, you had a tracker on his wrist during the game for steps. He probably gets up around 10 or 15,000. <laughs> I mean, he's running up and down the sidelines. And he's full of energy. He's the coach who has his shirt off after the game in the post-game locker room, crowd surfing. <laughs> in the locker room, he has energy. First and 10. Shadrick Bird right at the line, met at the 20. Durante Davis, the first one there. And Davis has to really think about he does a really good job of, of filling right here. They, they got to be thinking they're going to get a little bit more on the outside run from Reynolds at some point. He's going to pull it. And that's something that he's had a little bit of success with. Kind of in, in really kind of catching them off guard. The screen game has been huge also for Charlotte here in the second half. And they're taking more time in between plays, letting this play clock go under 10. And the Middle Tennessee defense make a play. Pressure on Reynolds. Flips it nearly intercepted. Cody Smith had it slip through his hands. And if you're Middle Tennessee, that's a play you would love to make. Well, Schaefer brings the all-out brisk. Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator. DQ Thomas almost gets home. And then there it goes. The interception opportunity left on the ground by Cody Smith. That's the second dropped interception. Yeah. Three blanket yeah. ship. Dropped what could have been a pick six. You talking about two? Both of them could have possibly gone the other way. Now it's third down and nine. Does he blitz again? Take a look at these defenders up here. Does he bring the pressure? Well, early movement. Free play. Reynolds finds the bows. Tries to box out, but it's knocked away. Ross wins that battle. However, flag down right at the start of the play. Probably looking at a third and four now. If that was a. Offside in the neutral zone at the snap. Defense number 96. Five yard penalty remains third down. Zaylin Wood moving before everybody else. Mm. And this is a huge down. You're going to probably have to single up again on the outside and to try to get some pressure because they, they can actually run in here and, and because they could go for it. On fourth down, as long, you, you completely changed the mathematics for this Charlotte offense with that offside. Two tight end set with Thompson joining Carrier. Third and short. Shadrick Bird shimmies through the line, has the first down. So it's a big penalty against Middle Tennessee. As Durante Davis makes the tackle, it's late after a gain of seven. Fresh set of downs for Charlotte. And now if you're Charlotte, you can kind of think about milking a little bit more clock. This is, now that you've got down in this area, you, you can be satisfied even if you come out of this drive with the field goal. It's more about getting them now as it was for them in the first half to use some of those timeouts. Yeah, so Middle Tennessee has to start to think about using them here. But getting the stop, the priority. And yeah, they got a little bit more of a window, I think, before they have to go to the timeouts. Carrier in motion, first and goal. Reynolds has a lead blocker, sidesteps to the right side, and he's blocked down near the goal line. Reynolds, who's approaching the 1,000 rushing yard mark in his Charlotte career at the quarterback spot. And Middle Tennessee uses one of their three timeouts. We'll be back in 30 seconds from Jerry Richardson Stadium in Charlotte. Timeout, Middle Tennessee. Charlotte right at the doorstep of going up two scores. Now he's trying to ride uh, Bird for as long as he can, but uh, he kind of tucks it pretty early in the down. And that time he got met by Jordan Ferguson <laughs> and a host of Raiders. Including Blankenship, who is now the all-time leader at tackles for Middle Tennessee. He has 12 on the day. 
third down, goal to go, to go up two scores. Huge play. Dollar in motion. Reynolds keeps himself, zigzags up the middle, dives ahead. Rolled short. Line judge comes in from the near side, rules him short. They may take a closer look at this, but it sets up fourth down, which you imagine if you're Charlotte, you think strongly about going for it to punch up two scores. Yeah, and maybe try to save that timeout if you're Time out, Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee. And they use it. The third and final of the half. Remember, the nose of the football and the tippy point of the goal line is all you need. Yeah, from my vantage point, I, I think he's a little bit short uh, because the ball actually hit down before it got to the goal line. And that was a pretty good call by the linesman. Yeah, I, I still think that, that, that that's close, but he's a little bit short. So fourth down, if it doesn't get reviewed or overturned, you're Charlotte, you go for this, right? Yeah, you go for it because they're so far. They're in terrible yeah. field position, right? They got to go 99 yards. And it looks like they may not have that option. <laughs> they're getting excited. You get club lit on the sidelines. They give me an early reaction because they keep looking at the replay. But if it's not a touchdown, I think you definitely go for it on fourth down. It's, it's a no-brainer decision. Think back to Sunday night when it was the Chiefs and the Ravens. The decision that John Harbaugh made, that aggressive move to win the game with Lamar Jackson, a quarterback. Hey, your offense is on the field. You don't want to get the ball back to Patrick Mahomes. Not at all. a chance to win it. No. Not completely the same here, but not too dissimilar either. Well, this is your captain, and, and you might have it right back in his hands. They, they've actually let him run it two times now here on the goal line. So it wouldn't be a surprise at all if he runs it again. Right under center, Reynolds, only 5'11", jumps over the pile, reaches the ball across, count it, touchdown Charlotte, up two scores with four minutes left. He clearly got it over. That's a pretty good vertical by Reynolds. <laughs> he jumped right over the top, and that was still had pretty good ball security uh, on that touchdown. But now going for two gives you an opportunity to go up and, and maybe even make it. Well, they're not going to go for two. They're going to go for the extra point here. But yeah, Reynolds stays on as a holder for Jonathan Cruz. Took time off the clock and punctured with a touchdown. 41 32. Chance to make it an even 10. 11 play drive for Charlotte. Reynolds the holder. Extra point through. 42 32. Charlotte up 10. Reynolds. Ending it or attempting to by leaping over the top for the Charlotte 49ers. Reynolds in again. Bring global tax services and software solutions by Werner. Step up your game with Werner Ladder and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Bank of America Stadium. Carolina Panthers, by the way, 3-0. And, oh. and Charlotte doesn't lose here at home either in college. <laughs> Chris Reynolds having quite the night. Over 300 passing yards, four touchdowns. Also a rushing touchdown. Career high for touchdowns in a game. And Charlotte with an 11-play drive to retake a two-score lead. For those of you tuning in for the UNLV Fresno State game, you'll be able to find that online at cbssports.com slash cbssn as soon as it kicks off. And, of course, we'll get you out there immediately after the conclusion of this game. Well, Charlotte looking to win a Conference USA opener. They've only won one of their prior six. Conference USA openers preseason number four in their East Division both of these teams in Conference USA East So 
Now for Middle Tennessee, Chase Cunningham, his first start. Down by two scores late with four minutes left. Cunningham pressured, sidesteps left, off balance throw. That is Jalen Lane who can make people miss by the 40, late flag. Pickup of 13. Man, another flag. <laughs> There's been a lot of penalties in this game. One thing about Cunningham, he's shown an ability to throw the football well on the run going left. And that's something that's very hard to do as a right handed quarterback. Kofi Wardlow, players still down. Personal foul, illegal blind side block, offense number 11. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run remains first down. 16 penalties in this game, 10 of them on Middle Tennessee. There's 11, and he's coming in, and he, that was that was kind of from no no way that you were in front in in, in front of his when you're making that block. <laughs> I don't think he got a lot of him, Chris, but he, he got the call. Edwards is a tough kid. I mean, you, you like the way he's he run the ball tonight, the way he's blocked the last two weeks. I don't even think he got all that he wanted to get of the defender on that one. I but do like Anderson kind of pointing to his chest saying, my bad, yeah. the sportsmanship there. It's another first down. Anderson gets the ball this time down the far sideline. It's Brad Anderson who loses the ball late. After he gets stopped after a game of about 14, Shedrick Ursery for Charlotte on the tackle. Middle Tennessee has to work quickly down by two possessions with 3.30 left. Yeah, I just like his energy. He, he's a guy you want to get the ball to more because he can energize your team. Cunningham steps up, chased by Watts, escapes it, looking for England Chisholm. Mm. And completes. You don't have any timeouts left. There's three minutes and 21 seconds to go. You're going to have to challenge a little bit more down the field. They're playing deep zone. They have a lot of backups in actually in the in the secondary. Marcus Robitaille's back in back back there along with John Alexander. Uh, but you got to challenge some of these guys down the field. See if they can make a play on the ball. You've got a deep receiving core. Cunningham was going to be the starter anyway this week. Then the starter from the first three weeks, Bailey Hockman, left the team on Sunday. So it's Cunningham's show for sure. And finds Jaron Pierce, the redshirt senior, for a pickup of eight. Third down, two to go. Three minutes left. Middle Tennessee needs ten points. Remember, they have no timeouts left as well. Use them all on defense. Off the quick snap, Pierce has the first down, steps out of bounds, so that will stop the clock for a beat as Alexander and Murray knock him out. Well, we, we, we've been talking about the fact that they aren't able to stop the clock anymore, but they haven't really won many sideline routes. So he got flushed a couple times on the drive. You're going to have to push the ball down the field to the sideline some, too. If you do end up throwing the ball in the middle of the field, you can always get up and potentially clock it if you get a first down. Chase Cunningham against the defense that's just waiting to rush him. They send four. Zips, and it's caught. Jimmy Marshall right on the hash. The UNLV Fresno State game is underway and now available on CBSSports.com slash CBSSN. We'll get you out there as soon as this one is over. As Chase Cunningham doesn't want it to be over just yet. Over two minutes left on a first and ten. Flag down as Cunningham runs. Out of bounds prior to the 20. That might be on number 53, Lance Robinson. So what's the end of the run, guys? So we'll see. The penalties have just been a detriment today for the yeah. Blue Raiders. Yeah. Already 10 penalties, which is a season high. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Defense number zero penalized half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Well, this one goes against Charlotte with yeah. Watts. Yeah, well, it's Watts against Robinson on, on the edge. And you'll see it right over here. And he gets his hands underneath. I thought it might have been a hold on him. And instead, you give them unnecessary yardage and the clock stops. You completely changed the game with that penalty. Now 2.13 to go. Uh, and, and really, they're in prime position to maybe cut this score down. Now, 
you need 10 points, which is a touchdown and a field goal. How much time do you let go off the clock before you get the three at least before you try the onside kick? You don't have any timeouts. You well, can't get the ball back to Charlotte. I just don't know if you trust your kicker enough. Your kicker's only attempted well, one field goal this, this year. Game clock for two minutes and 16 seconds. The game clock will start on the snap. And there we go. We're getting a little bit more of a, they're cleaning up some things. But again, you're talking about a field goal kicker who's only attempted one field goal. That's tonight the entire year. So do you have confidence that he can come in? Because if he misses the field goal now, the game's over. You, you might want to go ahead and get the touchdown first and, and maybe save the field goal for later. Redshirt Jr. from Knoxville, Tennessee. Chase Cunningham. Baseball shortstop at the youth level. We've seen that baseball style of being a quarterback. A lot of off balance. Don't need to have those feet completely set. In fact, both quarterbacks used to be baseball players. Both former walk-ons. Zips over the middle. Caught on a slant into the end zone. Yusef Ali. Touchdown, Middle Tennessee. They get the touchdown with still plenty of time. It was 2-12. I mean, that was in... Really just an incredible execution on the penalty certainly helped, uh, but you get him right now. They got to come over and match this. They kind of leave that uncovered and, and Ali goes in really untouched unabated and, and you cannot have that kind of mishap from a communication standpoint defensively late in the game. I mean, there's over two minutes left and, and now I, I think you got to be very disappointed if you're Charlotte defensively. That's a 12-yard touchdown from Cunningham to Ali. Five passing touchdowns. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> start number one for Chase Cunningham. Quick decision-making all night. Breaking extra points. It's a big one. It goes. Three-point deficit. Rick Stock still in Middle Tennessee, not out of it, but onside kick time. You have to do it, you imagine. You don't have any time outside. Yeah, you yeah. have to do it. There, there's no question about it. You're going to go for the onside kick, and now it just comes down to, again, something else that you don't have a lot. Remember, their kicker from a year ago was Cruz Holt. A little bit inconsistent in 2020. He was a guy who had been there for a while. And Scott Payne is your kickoff specialist. So who gives the onside? It wouldn't even be Zeke Rankin. You're probably going to go with Payne. Scott Payne. He's out on the field now. Right. Now, he's had one onside this year. So, it, it, again, it, it, what type of onside? Do you go with the middle onside? Do you go? Do you try to get the, the second hop? Or, or, or you can't really overload. So it's a little bit difficult in terms of how you're going to plan this out. And this is the game. You do the yeah. math, 40, 40, 40. That's... Enough time to evaporate the clock. If you're Charlotte, you get the ball. All you need to do is kneel. I think maybe they go with some type of, even though they've got, you know, six guys or seven guys up, maybe some type of middle. Payne's onside. Goes left. Takes the high hop. Brought in by Charlotte. Clean snatch. Calvin Kemp. For a guy who's had some ball security issues, this is a pretty big recovery. Should not be taken for granted. You got guys well and down to hit you, and, and you make that type of recovery when the game on the line. Uh, that's a pretty good job right here. Camp had a big go-ahead score, a 44-yard touchdown. Actually, I think that was Tyler Murray, that, 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 oh, yeah. that number five. I think he team, I said that C on the ch chest. Yeah, that's Tyler Murray. Yeah. Good call. They announced Camp, but you're right, that's Tyler Murray. The Jacksonville, Florida native, who's made a number of big plays so far through the first month of the year for Charlotte. All Reynolds needs to do is kneel on the ball. Let that 40 seconds wind on down. Middle Tennessee has no way to stop the clock. And how about Reynolds? Top of the broadcast score. You talked about you got to put the Duke game behind you. That was too long ago. That was when he had his best game of the year. A couple of, by his standards, subpar games, but he responded in a strong way here at home. He did, and, and I think really what it came down to is it, it really their offensive coordinator, Mark Carney, he knew that one of the ways you get him 
into a rhythm was throw some quick game in there you got his legs involved early they ran some screens they were also able to eventually take some shots in the one-on-one -on -one situations where he was pretty accurate particularly to DeBose and some of the man-to-man -man situations he took advantage he becomes the all-time leader in passing touchdowns in this game did that on his second touchdown for Charlotte on top of the all-time list and added on two more after that Charlotte picks up a win in their conference USA opener which is just the second time that they've done it and now they're seven years in conference USA will Healy has the good feelings here in the Queen City I think both teams showed a lot tonight uh, uh, you saw a lot with Chase Cunningham on the other side I think they found their quarterback for 2021 with Cunningham uh, Reynolds certainly we already knew what to kind of expect from him in terms of bounce back this football team has a chance to get back to a bowl game, and I think that's the bottom Time line. Out. They're three and one now. Charlotte. They're in a, a very good position in terms of this conference. Of Thirty seconds. And really, hand. this conference is kind of wide open, right? Yeah. Marshall, one of the favorites. Tough competition against App State, but yesterday that was a wild one. App State won that. The UNLV Fresno State game is underway and now available at cbssports.com slash cbssn. We'll get you out there as soon as this one is over. And there's still no scores out there in Fresno, which I'll certainly be a good one. Fresno State looked strong against UCLA last time. They did it right now. UNLV is only averaging about 15 points a game, so they're trying to kind of turn that tide against a, a defense that has a lot of athletes at Fresno. Uh, but again, back to this Middle Tennessee team along with Charlotte, I think both teams have you get one problem corrected with the offensive line with Middle Tennessee and I think you got another problem corrected in terms of the explosive plays with Charlotte. So enough to build off of for both of these squads you have to win an extra beat to kneel on the ball with 42 seconds left and Reynolds executes that well. And you can start club lit <laughs> the post game <laughs> celebration for Charlotte. They get it done at home again. They are nine and two at home over the past two seasons as Will Healy makes it tough to beat Charlotte here at Jerry Richardson Stadium. What a job he's done in a short period of time. It's not easy to come from somewhere where you're successful like Austin P and then have the success he's had in really two or three years here at Charlotte. Middle Tennessee has Marshall next for Charlotte. It's Illinois next, but that's a great words of encouragement from Will Healy to Chase Cunningham. Great game here in Charlotte. Final score 42 39. Charlotte gets a W against Middle Tennessee. Coming up next, UNLV Fresno State. For Corey Chavis and our entire CBS crew, I'm Chris Lewis. This has been a brief.